broke on top last week, won their first game, maybe get a little confidence coming into tonight. And uh, we're glad to be here at Absolutely. the stomping grounds. Absolutely. And like you said, uh, getting that win, that win was big for them. I think, uh, you know, it, for a team that uh, might be a younger team, a, a team that's uh, looking to, to find its way, establish something, have that, that positive um, foundation to build off of, to have a little uh, feedback that, yes, all this hard work is worth it and paying off. And I think uh, we saw that they, they played a tremendous game last week, and uh, hopefully that, that bodes for uh, a good showing tonight. And they've played Strom Thurmond tough here at the stomping grounds, upsetting the number one ranked Strom Thurmond Rebels so probably about 10, 15 years ago, <laughs> about 32 points. The only game Strom Thurmond lost that year, they went on to win the state championship. But that's Strom Thurmond. Strom Thurmond is one of those teams, they have a lot of confidence. They're undefeated. And uh, it starts with Tyree Stidham. It really does. He's been outstanding all season, steps in there at quarterback, and uh, didn't have a whole lot of experience at quarterback. He's just been phenomenal. Uh, he is the anchor that they you know, set sail with on offense. Defensively, I just love their defense. 3 5 defense. They stun all over the place. They're quick. Uh, the two things I like most about Strom Thurmond. Number one, they know how to win. They've got the tradition that goes for them, and they come in undefeated, and they're used to that, so they know how to win. And number two, I don't think I've ever seen a team around here that has any more fun playing football. They like to fly around. They're excited, and uh, they're just fun to watch. Typically, when you have a 4A playing a 2A, you say, yeah, oh, the 4A is going to be the favorite. Uh, Strom Thurman's not your average 2A, so I, I think they uh, – have to be the favorite going into tonight. Yeah, not only the number one team in the Aiken Standard rankings, the number one, number two team in the state in the uh, the poll and what what paper is this? Just uh, uh, it's actually we're, we all uh, all the, the the papers that cover the preps uh, across right. the state. We uh, Aiken Standard uh, votes in it as well, and uh, yeah, it's the media poll for all of South Carolina, number two in all of Class A. Yeah, and that's uh, Noah votes in that poll, so that's why we defer to him as the <laughs> expert on those type of things. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to take a look at some of the other teams playing in the area when we return on the pregame show for tonight's Goals Gym Game of the Week. Tyler's Tire and Auto Center, founded in 1963, family owned and operated for 50 years and dedicated to customer service with safety of your family, our top priority. Tyler's Tire is a full service tire retail, tire repair, and automotive repair facility with ASC certified mechanics. Located in two locations, 1019 Richland Avenue West and 1518 Whiskey Road. Let our family take care of yours, Tyler's Tire and Auto Center. You can smile. I love to smile. I was so pleased that I could get all of my dentistry work done in just one visit. You can smile. Painless. That's how I would describe it. Here at the Center for Dentistry, it has been a wonderful experience. With the comprehensive nature of this office, this one office, I can bring my family here and we can have it all done at one place. You can smile. Center for Dentistry, 1391 Silver Bluff Road, Aiken. From our Looney Tunes Savings Club that teaches young people their first lessons about managing money to free financial counseling services for adults, Security Federal Bank grows with our customers and has a service to meet every need. Established right here in Aiken County in 1922, we continue to be your hometown bank. We always work to meet the changing needs of our customers. That's why we've become a company that can meet every need for financial services. From online banking, bill pay, mortgage products, trusts, and a full line of insurance products. If we were you, we'd bank with us. Were you hurt on the job? Are you trying to keep your work comp payments? Do you feel like no one is listening? Your employer, the company doctor, the insurance company? Well, we're listening. Our workers' compensation team has helped hundreds of injured South Carolinians. Call us now and let us listen to you. For a free consultation, call 803-644-5335 or visit thechandlerlawfirm.com. You can count on Chandler. What a crowd we have on hand tonight. And last, before kickoff, here comes the game ball. Set to be brought in from the sky by parachute. The crowd has spotted him as he comes in for a landing. Oh, that's got to hurt. From orthopedics to neurology, imaging to pain management, or even if a good idea just turns into an accident, CMI can help you play again. Learn more at CMI.md. 
Welcome back to Gold's Gym Game of the Week pregame show. Don't forget to pick up a copy of the Aiken Standard Saturday morning to check on all the area's team's results from Friday night. Then on Sunday, you want to check that out. Game balls will be presented to the area's top players. On Monday, the Aiken Standard Power Rankings will be released. And on Tuesday, the Wave Aiken Standard Player of the Week is named want to congratulate, congratulate last week's Wave Aiken Standard Player of the Week, which was Tyree Stidham. Tyree, seen here, holding his jacket as Chris Boyer was on location somewhere else. He uh, was our Player of the Week. Had a great, great week. Absolutely. Just uh, continuing off of uh, what's been a really impressive start to the season. He had... Uh, uh, you know, had uh, he's got 10 touchdowns on the season now. Uh, he ran in a couple more last week. Uh, he just, uh, you know, is the is that that polished player that makes that Strom Thurmond uh, offense go. Yeah, and also, we want to congratulate his teammate, wide receiver, T uh, not Tanner, uh, Paget Sumner, who was the um, center for dentistry MVP last week, and uh, we've got, Tyree's won it twice already so last week we thought maybe Tyree would want to share it a little bit and uh, he had a big week he had a touchdown catch that was big and yeah, a big set, fourth down play and he set up a couple he a really nice catch down on the near the goal line a sliding catch uh, at the end of the first half he really sparked Strom Thurmond uh, with only 38 seconds left and he made that touchdown reception had a great reception later on in the ball game and uh, he was a deserving candidate for most valuable player really had a nice ball game you want to stay tuned at the end of tonight's ball game we'll be naming a new center for dentistry MVP so make sure you stay with us through the end if you don't want to miss it we got a couple of uh, players of the week playing tonight uh, we got Rasul Clemens mm -hmm. and we've got Tyree Stidham and so you want to see all of that going on. All right, let's talk about some of these games going on in the area. And first up, Aiken has traveled to North Augusta. This was uh, a game that was the rivalry as I was growing up, going to Aiken High School. Bit two 4A schools, a little different now. North Augusta still 4A, Aiken 3A. Still big game mm -hmm. and one that Aiken, you know, wants to knock them off. Absolutely. Now, I think there's more enthusiasm about this game. Um, than there has been in a number of years just because of, of what Aiken's doing, that they they seem to be making strides and trying to get back to where they, they were, which was uh, one, the preeminent program in the area. And that, in a lot of respects, that's where North Augusta is right now. Um, so that they, uh, you know, tonight's a perfect chance to try to, to make a case that they belong there. They're going to have their work cut out for them. Again, obviously, we know how good North Augusta is. But uh, as was the case last week, uh, Aiken will be without their star tailback, uh, Brayton Sanders. He's still nursing a, a knee injury that uh, the coach staff uh, at Aiken is hopeful he can uh, recover from, but he won't be there on the field for him tonight. Okay, North Augusta got a big win last week over Burke. I got to watch some of that on Sunday in the replay, and uh, they were behind the whole game, and they came storming back at the end and pulled it out. Yeah, and that's what good teams do. They found a way to win. They really didn't dominate that game by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, they were losing the whole ball game for the most part, and uh, then they came back and won. They're also a team, just like Strom Thurmond, they know how to win. Uh, I think this is the uh, game between the two coaches named Brian, both of them relatively new to their area, and I think Brian Thomas has uh, more cards in his stack than uh, Brian Neal. So I think uh, North Augusta will probably win this one. Uh, Aiken hopefully will be able to see that they're making some strides, and it would be a neat upset if they could pull it off, but I don't think they'll do that. I think Trib Reese and company will win this ball game. We'll uh, see North Augusta next week, as that'll be the game of the week at Strom Thurmond as we become the TV network for Strom Thurmond. <laughs> for they a little just, while, they keep, play, they keep playing all these great matchups that we want to see, so we appreciate that. Uh, Silver Bluff is at Midland Valley tonight. Silver Bluff still struggling, struggling to find their identity. Midland Valley trying to bounce back after last week's loss to Strom Thurmond. Exactly. That, that, that's it. I think uh, – you know, Midland Valley is real, and they uh, they they suffered some some pretty significant injuries, uh, losing at least five players for the season already, which is uh, it's hard to, to deal with. And uh, I think they're struggling a little bit with uh, confidence because uh, you know that they came into the season expecting, like so many of us did, to to do so well, and they've lost, be it to very good teams in North Augusta and Strom Thurmond, but still, it's it's tough uh, to recover from that tonight. It's a perfect opportunity for them to sort of go out and, and sort of 
flex their muscles, so to speak, especially on offense, where we saw Daniel Carr um, was just remarkable last weekend. Maybe a, a couple of plays here or there from uh, his receivers. That might have been a different game. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, he's so good. I, I have to like that what Midland Valley can do. But this is a big rivalry between the schools. It's it's big between the two head coaches who used to be uh, on, uh, assistants together at Silver Bluff. Um, so the unexpected usually happens in this game. So I wouldn't rule anything out, especially with a, a week off to prepare for us. Well, I'll tell you, uh, Silver Bluff head dog tonight. Coaches, they have great effort from their kids. Could pull a lot more balanced on. I saw them last week. Uh, I think that will work in Silver Bluff's favor. Here, some kind of defense with Sermon. They'll line up and they'll be coming after you from all kinds of blitzes, all and uh, that difference in the ball game. But Valley's got the favorite tonight. I'd like to see them run the football too. So we'll see what happens. All right, Fox Creek is at Williston. Williston put 55 points on the board last week. I'm sure Fox Creek going to try to keep them down a little bit. Fox Creek's kind of in a similar situation to South Ake in that at our game where they uh, they got their first win last week uh, after suffering losses to, to, I think, two teams that they could say are just better teams than, than they are. Um, so they, they feel like they, they have a little something, a little momentum on their side. That said, Fox Creek has never beaten Willis and Elko. I don't think tonight is the night that they, they're going to be able to, to snap that skid. And yeah. we'd like to think that both of these teams are hitting their midseason stride. I think Fox Creek scored 41 points last week. Uh, Williston scored 55. Uh, the disclaimer to that is they both played very, very weak teams. And uh, so i, I got to agree with you. I think Williston Elko will probably pull it out. I think it will be close, though. Batesburg Leesville has its hands full, or rather Rich Spring Mineta has its hands full with Batesburg. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we saw Batesburg last year uh, make that run uh, to a state championship where they beat Silver Bluff uh, in Class AA Division II. Uh, they lost their head coach. They lost uh, some key players, but the, they do return a lot, and they have a lot of size, a lot of speed. Uh, they haven't been gotten off to the greatest start this year, but I have to believe that they're just going to be a little too physical for Ridge Spring to handle. But I, I think that Ridge Spring makes, a, makes it a great game just by their effort, and I, I really do like uh, Coach Corley there, what he does. He seems to maximize uh, – the potential out of his kids yeah the one thing i'm worried about and coach corley said it, he said a lot of people in the community are saying well why are you playing batesburg you know the traditionally very good team uh state champions all that kind of stuff and uh i can tell you from experience high school kids often pick out whether they're going to win or lose a game before anything ever happens in the game all right and if ridge springs feel in that way it'll make their night a little longer tonight so i think batesburg will probably pull this one out probably a little stronger and finally wagner sally is at whitmire i have to admit i don't know anything about whitmire yeah, uh, Whitmire's been uh, one of those teams uh, the past few years, traditionally very one of the weaker teams in the state. They've gotten off to a good start this year. Uh, they won their first two games. They, they're coming off a loss last week. Their wins were not over what you would call dynamic programs, but they are still winning. I think the fact that they have that, they're at home, and Wagner, like we mentioned in the past, there's a lot of potential on that Wagner roster, but they're still very raw, and I think they're, they're trying to find their way I think that's going to be the difference that uh, gives Whitmire an edge. And uh, one of the things that's kind of unusual, Whitmire got beat by Wagner Sally last year, 60 to six. Now we're favoring Whitmire this day, so that's a 60 point turnaround. That's unusual, but uh, unfortunately for Wagner Sally, I think it might be accurate. Yeah. All right. Well, that's a look at all the teams playing around the area. We'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll talk about tonight's game of the week, which features South Aiken playing host to Strom Thurmond. Right here on the Gold's Gym, Game of the Week. Since 1948, Hummy Tractor has been Aiken's place for farm equipment, implements, accessories, and supplies. But did you know that Holly is your place for home yard equipment too? Riding and push mowers, weed eaters, chainsaws, and brands including Kubota, Husqvarna, and still equipment you can depend on. Come inside and see our expanded showroom. Holly is the exclusive dealer for Yeti coolers and now carry Generac generators. Holly Tractor, 1721 Richland Avenue East. Sarah found me on the bathroom floor unconscious. I had a total blockage heart attack and an anoxic brain injury. 
Aiken Regional treated me with love and compassion and treated my family the same way. Thanks to them, we're living an awfully good life. At Spex Vision Center, we are focused on total eye care. Be it our large selection of designer frames, latest and contact lenses, or our great sunglass collection, we have just what you are looking for. Our doctors offer years of experience and use the latest technology to ensure a comprehensive eye examination. Late afternoon and Saturday appointments are available, so if you want the best in eye care, call Specs today at 642-9902. Most people think the Y is a gym, but to me, it's so much more. When I needed help, the Y gave my kids a scholarship to a safe place where they could grow, learn, and have fun. And when I was struggling with all kinds of health issues, they gave me the guidance and motivation to get well. The Y helps families create a better future and become so much more. So give, join, or volunteer at the Y. Since 1970, Bragg Heating Company has been keeping Aiken and the surrounding communities comfortable. Our factory trained staff can keep you on top of the latest in heating and cooling technology and our complete metal shop allows us to make any specialty piece your home may need. We recommend the best systems for your home, Train, Carrier, Dakin, Mitsubishi Ductless and Bosch Geothermal Systems. We accept most major credit cards and offer financing, so when you need your system maintained, repaired or replaced, called Bragg Heating Company. We're here to make you comfortable. Welcome back to South Aiken High School, where we have a little tailgating activity going on in the parking lot. A light rain is falling. Actually, that's here inside the grounds where they fix some tailgate food for you if you come on in. And if you need some supplies for your ultimate tailgate needs, go by Unique Expressions. They are the ultimate tailgate location, all kinds of things for you, whether it's high school, whether it's college, whether it's the pros. They've got quite a selection of great stuff at Unique Expressions, our ultimate tailgater sponsor. All right. We are at South Aiken High School for tonight's Gold's Gym Game of the Week, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about this game. You know, it's a game which Strom Thurmond, you would expect them to just keep on rolling and then based on records and past history, uh, that might be correct. But South Aiken has actually done fairly well in this matchup, and, and especially here. Mm -hmm. Not so much over at Strom Thurmond, but here at home, they've won some, some big games. And, and they were very close with them last year. It came down to uh, really, I think, the difference between uh, Strom Thurmond winning or losing was the outstanding play of Javier Hammond, who, you know, we've, we've uh, extolled his virtues uh, time and again. Mm -hmm. um, he's gone. Um, I think Strom is actually kind of uh, better, uh, off to a better start this year than they were certainly a year ago. Um, it, it, it's hard to to kind of pick against them just given how good they've been so fast. They, they've, they've been so balanced on offense. They've uh, been so aggressive on defense. And they've, they've had those game-changing plays in their favor on special teams. Even when they make a mistake, we've seen it twice, where the snap goes over the punter's head. He's still able to get it and get off a good punt that helps uh, helps the Rebel. So I think all the all the signs kind of port to them, but the, the big thing that, that South Aiken has, along with what should be a home field advantage, is uh, they have some size, and they might be the most physical team that uh, the Rebels have played to date. Um, you know, we saw how when Aiken and South Aiken went at it, it was really kind of a slugfest in the trenches, and that's what South Aiken's going to be going for tonight. If, if they can... Uh, win that battle at the line of scrimmage, they're going to have a chance to to compete in this game. But if they find that they get pushed around, it's going to be a, it's going to be a tough uh, tall task for them. As you pointed out in the open, their defense for Strom Thurmond very good. Five linebackers, and we called every one of them's name last week at one time or another. No question. And they're not as big as uh, probably South Aiken is tonight, uh, and uh, maybe not even as physical up front like you said. But they are quick. Uh, their whole team can run. 
very impressed by that. The other advantage that Strom Thurmond has, and once again, this is unusual when you have a 2A plan of 4A, they are a two-platoon team. They don't have anybody going both ways. South Aiken, on the other hand, does have several players going both ways. That's an advantage as the game wears on. Okay, I must say I like a lot of what South Aiken does, but I am really still impressed with Strom Thurmond. The other thing I look for tonight, and we saw a little bit of it last week, I believe, is Chad Gilchrist getting healthy okay uh, his ankle has been bothering him all his season he has not been the dominating force that i frankly thought he would be in the opening games so i look for him to perhaps have a breakout game tonight however i think i said the same thing last week and we didn't quite get that but he's tough he's and, tough and he's a good runner too and and i think he's he's helped and the team has been helped by the balance that they have another guy in Dion chin who can do some of the same things oh, yeah. as far as that power running um Obviously, they have Stidham, who, who yeah, I've really been impressed with how he's run inside, in between the tackles. That we know he's got great speed, and if he, he sweeps it out there, he could be hard to track down. But uh, he's been really tough. And then you mix in a guy like a DeAndre Ryan or an Israel Talbert on you know a, a sweep or a reverse, and it, it can be off to the races for them. Um, but I, I think the thing that uh, that they have to, to deal with tonight is uh, <laughs> Go ahead. coaches we are got, here. We got the coaches staff. Come on. They, 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 they're need to get the, they're the a little top. more important than we are. So <laughs> <laughs> let, 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 Live television. Hey, let these say? coaches get in the press box. That's good. Get them over. <laughs> South Aiken is also very athletic on defense. They have Strom guys. Thurman. They got, they got 45 of them now coming in here. All right. Again, we'll, we'll make room <laughs> are for Are there room enough for all those coaches? <laughs> I don't know. There? A couple of these big guys coming through here. I hope that uh, roof doesn't cave in on us now. Well, let's talk a little bit about South Aiken and South Aiken. They've got some weapons, and they've got some speed. You know, Strom Thurman's defense is extremely fast, but they do have some speed with Malik Lee mm -hmm. and also their starting tailback, Tansy Richardson. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, that they, that's that's going to be the trick for, for South Aiken. If they can find a way to get those guys on track, um, being able to run the ball effectively, they could be a very difficult team to, to deal with because, uh, honestly, the what's worked best for them the past two weeks when they, they had a close loss and then a win has been the passing game, the, the passing of Bowen Smith, who's a first-year starter. He's, uh, you know, he's been the guy that's propelled the offense versus the – Richardson and Lee and a guy like Hilton, who's got a tremendous amount of speed on the outside. Um, you know, they're still looking to find their spots. Rasul Clemens, though, defensively, offensively, big guy, big-time prospect going to Virginia. Uh, Virginia. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, he can be a difference maker. He can be a difference maker. The thing I've been impressed with him, he has a nose for the ball on defense. We've seen him recover a couple of fumbles. We've seen him cause some uh, problems, interception. Uh, really like him on defense. He moves around very well. And what a target he's got to be mm -hmm. as a receiver, okay? Uh, I'm a little disappointed in South Aiken's two running backs in terms of how they've been not able to have a breakout game yet. And I think both of them are very, very capable. I'm looking for that tonight. Uh, the only problem is they're – key is their speed and Strom Thurman's got speed everywhere. That's right. If they try to make it to the corners, they may find it tough. They yep. need to hit the holes, run dead south, north south, see what kind of yardage they can make against those linebackers. All right, that's going to do it for our pregame show. We'll take a break now and we'll come back and we'll get ready for the kickoff in tonight's Goals Gym Game of the Week here from South Aiken High School on ASTV and WRDW My 12. Pruitt Health is here to help. For more than four decades, Pruitt Health has partnered with healthcare professionals to deliver exceptional care to families across the Southeast. Since the beginning, our focus has always been on quality, quality programs, quality services, and quality people. Looking forward to the future, we've developed an innovative model of care to provide comprehensive, streamlined solutions. Get well for life with Pruitt Health. Unique Expressions in the Mitchell Shopping Center is a treasure chest of gifts for all occasions. The collegiate collection is second to none. South Carolina, Clemson, Georgia, ACC or SEC. Support your favorite school. From clothing to mailboxes to tailgating items, Unique Expressions has them all. Handbags by Spartina and the Vera Bradley Collection. And a U.S. Post Office on site for your mailing convenience. Stop in today at Unique Expressions, 1521 Whiskey Road. When you want to mix it up right, you need the tastiest choices around. And McDonald's Dollar Menu and More has always got your back. Feeling like a classic? 
Try the one and only McChicken, still just a buck. Or you can always turn it up with the great tasting McDouble. Plus other delicious hits, all for a price you can't beat. Whatever your flavor, the dollar menu and more is just what you need to keep you moving. There's something for everyone to love at McDonald's. One evening we were sitting around the table. My four-year-old stood up in his chair and he said, Dad, I want to be just like you. And I thought, that's great. Until he said, I want to be nice and big and fat. It was at that moment I realized I need to make a change. I took the scales at over 208 pounds, and that was the point that I realized I really needed to make a change. In fact, we both really needed to make a change. Together, we have lost 150 pounds, and our family has a healthy new future. live at the stomping grounds on the campus of South Aiken High School where tonight South Aiken plays host to the Strom Thurmond Rebels 3 and 0 on the season ranked number 1 in the Aiken Standard Power Rankings South Aiken 1 and 2 they won their first game last week and they're ready to take that newfound confidence and see what they can do here on the home field as they come out on the field Nice crowd out here tonight. They've braved the rain. It's only a light rain. It's not bad. Hopefully it'll uh, go away completely. The umbrellas have been put away, so perhaps it is gone completely. You still have time to get out here to South Aiken and take in tonight's game. Great crowd on the visitor side for Strom Thurman. As usual, their marching band is here as well, and we're ready for a big Big game here between a 4A school and a 2A school, one of the finest 2A schools in the state. Yeah, their tradition is just incredible. Lee Sawyer built himself a dynasty, and Antoine Hillary has just kept it going. All right. Our captains have met at midfield, and South Aiken won the toss and deferred to the second half. Uh, who were the captains, Coach? For the visiting Strom Thurmond Rebels, number three, Jacob Cook. Okay, number 44. Lucky Bailey, an inside linebacker, and number 74, Big Chad Stevens, their nose guard. And for South Aiken, number 10, Malik Lee, starting at safety, also a running back. Number 64, Caleb Stanford, and number 73, Lee Gerardo. All right, let's pause for our national anthem. our national anthem before tonight's ball game. We're about set to go with the CMI kickoff. And, and uh, South Aiken won the toss, decided they would uh, defer to the second half. And uh, 
that means they're going to put their defense out on the field to start the game. What do you think about that? I like that. I like that call, and I uh, also like the fact that they've got Owen Myers kicking it off for him because he could put this ball in the end zone and make Strom Thurmond have 20 yards to go. Real quick before we get into the ball game, uh, the captain for uh, number 73 for South Aiken is Lee Gerardo. Yes, yeah. Lee Gerardo. I think I said I Gerardo. You were trying it's to Gerardo. Go, to, yeah. go too fast. Yeah, I, I think I was there. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. since I'm sitting next to a Gerardo, I better get it right. <laughs> this is his first time being the captain. Very proud of him. He actually uh, was the one that talked to the referee, and I hope that was what the coach wanted. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll find out. <laughs> All right, we're about set to go. CMI with the opening kickoff. High end over end, drives him back to the goal line, into the end zone, automatic touchback. Strom Thurman will take over at the 20-yard line with a Chandler Law Firm first down. And that's a huge uh, break for South Aiken right off the bat, and it's really not a break. It's just a huge weapon that they have. We saw Strom Thurman last week run a touchdown back from about 98 yards, and it really set the tone for the second half of the ball game and just uh, led to a route. So uh, good thing you have somebody like Owen Myers so they can keep them from doing that. Myers kicks it into the Tyler Tire end zone. So Strom Thurman brings their offense out. Tyree Stidham, last week's Aiken Standard, Wave Aiken Standard Player of the Week. Chad Gilchrist right beside him. Going to go outside. This is Nick. And it bounces up there, and it's incomplete. We'll see that quite often. Tyrese Nick is number 84. He also goes often to... DeAndre Ryan, who is number eight, who splits out wide to the right in the slot. Hands off this time to Gilchrist. Gilchrist looking for room, but here comes a flag. Where that came from, you usually find it's holding. He gets a good gain of nine yards, but it is holding against Strom Thurman. That'll bring it back, and we'll back Strom Thurman up. Half the distance to the goal, actually, if it's from the 20-yard line, if it's called from there, which it probably was, that means it will go back to the 10-yard line. And it's just convenient that that's half the distance to the goal. You know, uh, we look at this defense for South Aiken, and they've got a couple of people there that I really like. I like their linebackers and Jeremy Hamilton and Ryan McNutt. I think both of them are tough in there and make a lot of tackles. like the speed they have at safety. Uh, they can be a pretty good defensive unit, and they're going to have to be tonight. Second down and 10 from the 10-yard line. Second down and 20. Again, Gilchrist on Stidham's left. Throws. Oh, bounced up in there, and Nick almost made the catch. It bounced around, and that would have been a huge gain if he could have come up with it. But it falls incomplete. Third down and 20. I'll tell you what, I think if he had gotten that on the tip drill, he'd have been in the end zone. The, the defensive back or one of the defensive backs for South Aiken went for the football and it bounced right over his head. A little fortunate. So third and long. Let's see what Strom comes up with on this. False count. Now looks to the sidelines. We'll call the play. Steps back and ready to go. Now looks out to his left, right, left again. And that is DeAndre Ryan. First time we've seen tonight. He's going to pick up about nine yards, but he'll be 11 yards short of the first down. Fourth and 11, and the punting unit comes out on the field. And tonight, Colfell will receive this back close to the goal line, and they've had some problems. They've had snaps over the punter's head three games in a row. Cole has made the best out of those bad snaps, but they certainly don't want to see another one here. Not this close to the end zone. And there it is. Over there his it head. is. It's going to roll out the back of the end zone, and it'll be a safety. So South Aiken gets the first big break of the ball game, and that's four games in a row that they've had that happen. I'll tell you, that is such an important part of any football team, but particularly when you get down to this level of high school. And I used to just scout in my phys ed classes all year long to just to find somebody that could snap that ball accurately. I don't care whether he weighed 100 pounds or 200 pounds. If he could snap the ball, he could play. And uh, I think they might want to try the same thing. They've got to get somebody that can snap that ball accurately back there. That's going to kill them in some of the big games if it doesn't get straightened out. So South Aiken 
will now receive the kickoff. The kickoff will be from the 20-yard line. So South Aiken will get, you would think, good field position after the kickoff. And we'll see the thoroughbred offense for the first time tonight. Malik Lee, number 10, is deep. He is a threat to go coast to coast anytime he touches the ball. And I like the fact that uh, in this situation, he'll have some space perhaps. He has good speed, but he's come up from that deep position. Yes. And Richardson is deep to the left of the kicker. On the far side of the field is number 22, which is Harold Hilton. They've got speed back there, don't they? And Harold Hilton is the youngest brother of a, a Gamecock who we'll talk about in just a second. This is going to be Richardson. That's a good and return. A good return to the 48-yard line. So South Aiken has good field position. They lead two to nothing after the safety. And they are set to go. They couldn't ask for a much better start this, for this ball game. Bowen Smith, the quarterback for South Aiken. And Richardson lines up directly behind him as they run this pistol formation. Stands up and throws outside, complete. And tackled over there, number six, Danaji Husindov. That may be our favorite last name of all the players that we've seen this season. <laughs> really, that is his name, Husindov. All right, gain of four, second down and six. And we have a official, I think this is a equipment timeout, as he pointed at number 11, Eli Bentley. Uh, apparently he had something sticking out that wasn't right, <laughs> belt-wise, and uh, he's put it back. They don't make him leave the field. So we're ready to go. It's rare that you see a belt cause that kind of a timeout. Mouth guard, yes, belts, not all that. Smith going to roll to his left, looks downfield, throws it up, and it's tipped and almost intercepted. Nice play over there. One of the linebackers, I think that was uh, Gartrell, who was back there. Pretty dangerous play that time. Under some pressure, rolling to his left off balance. Threw it to a lot of coverage. Third down and six as they look to the sidelines to get the play. Jeremy West not calling the plays tonight. And it's intercepted by Strom Thurman. And now bringing it back down into South Aiken territory is number nine. That's Tanner Bird, one of the outside linebackers. I believe he was actually who broke up the last play. He picked that one off. It's right to him. He made the play, Coach. Yeah, they did. And uh, they've got the five linebackers that drop into pass coverage most of their time. They can put pressure on with just the three guys up front. And uh, tough situation to throw into. And uh, really, nobody open. There is a flag down on the field on the return. I believe that this will be a take away some of the field position as they bring the ball back to midfield and they'll have a walk off from there against Strom Thurman but there'll still be Strom Thurman's ball on the turnover looks like a either holding or pushing the back he sort of didn't give us a whole lot with that <laughs> I think you're right I think it was holding so regardless of what it was Strom Thurman has the football on about the 39th yeah, 39-yard line, Chandler Law Firm, first down. Two possessions, nobody's gotten a first down yet. There's a, no, he keeps, does Stidham. Breaks the first initial hit, picks up a couple of yards. Give him, he gets a four yards on the play, 43-yard line, second down and six. Two 
Shotgun formation. Bring Sumner in motion. This time hands off to Sumner, and Sumner gets across the 50-yard line into thoroughbred territory at the 48-yard line. That'll bring up the first Chandler Law Firm first down of the game for Strom Thurman. Nice run by Sumner. We mentioned him in the pregame show. He had a couple of really super pass receptions last week that helped bring about the victory. Here he gets a chance to run the football. Nice effort. Does hand off up the middle. This is, I believe, first time we see Dion Chin, who had his tweet from earlier in the week posted all over the locker room at South Aiken. Coach West took me in the locker room to show it to me. He uh, said, got over 100 yards against the Mustangs. Can't wait to go against <laughs> South Aiken. And that's not something you want to say. We'll see who has the last lap before this is over. And there's a handoff. This is Gilcrest into the secondary and across the 25-yard line. That'll be another Chandler Law Firm first down, and Strom Thurman has it going, and that's uh, the Chad Gilchrist we expected to see as we look at the Specs instant replay. And you can still see his ankle taped heavily, but that was a nice run. Looked like he had more speed than he's had early in the season. There's a handoff. Makes a little move. This is Chin. Chin gets down to the, looks like the 16-yard line. Here comes flags out. We'll see what the call is. That might be a unnecessary roughness call. We'll see who it's on. Rasul Clements isn't looking too happy, so I'm going to guess South Aiken. Although the referee appears to be pointing back towards Strom Thurman. We'll see. Yeah, here. I thought that it was going to be a little extracurricular blocking. Yeah, it's a personal foul against Strom Thurman. Uh, one of their players continued to block after the, the whistle had sounded. And so he picks up a 15-yarder. So it'll bring up second down and 16. Takes the handoff, drops back, looks for the screen pass. Now it's a wheel route over to Chad Gilchrist. He turns, tried to make it up. It was thrown behind him. Really, I think he turned the wrong way. He turned inside. He probably should have tried to look outside. He was pretty well covered on that, though. Yeah, they had two defenders there. Pass over to Nick. Nick going to reverse field, looking for a block from his quarterback. He did his best, did Stidham, to give him a block. South Aiken did a good job on containment and stayed with him. I kind of think they'll go for it here rather than risk another punt snap, but we'll see. The fourth down, 14, ball at the 30-yard line, just over the 30. You would call it the 29. They need to make the 15-yard line for a first down. You know what strikes me as funny? They run virtually everything from the shotgun, which is a direct snap, but they still have such a problem with the uh, long the, snap. Yeah, the punt being a little bit further. And you're right, they don't have problems with this. Now here comes the pressure. Going to get out and try to get to the corner. He's tackled. Strom Thurman going to turn it over on downs to South Aiken. So South Aiken able to keep Strom Thurman off the board after the interception and the turnover. So South Aiken's back in business. Ball will be at the 27-yard line. Chandler Law Firm first down for South Aiken, two to nothing. Nice effort here by Tyrese Stidham. He almost makes the first down after breaking a couple tackles and winding his way back and forth across the uh, field. Penalties hurt Strom Thurman in that drive. They had a couple big plays called back. Now going to go to the run. This is Richardson. Richardson runs hard, makes some men miss, and gets up to the 33-yard line, a gain of five yards. Bring up second down and five. That's a nice move by Richardson. Richardson. 
If you're tuning in late, Strom Thurman got a safety on a snap over the punter's head. Now under pressure, Bowen Smith looks to run out of there. He's going to lose a couple of yards on that play, so it'll go as a sack. And we got to credit a coverage sack there. Nobody to throw to. He had a little time at the beginning, then the protection broke down. So a loss of two, third down and seven coming up. Got four wide receivers split to the left side right now with one to the right. They get the play in. They better hurry up, I think. No play clock here for us to uh, tell you where that is, and there goes the whistle. So the official keeping the play clock on the field was following what coach said. They better hurry. Uh, you know, sometimes coaches get that internal clock. I knew that was getting short. So a walk off of five yards brings up third down and 11. Hand off. That goes to Tansy Richardson who lined up outside and came across, picks up a couple of yards. We'll give him four yards, call it fourth down and six. And the punt is the call here. Owen Myers on to punt. Kick is off. Going to field it. Deion, Deion, DeAndre Ryan on the return. And... South Lincoln does a good job of covering. I think Lee Gerardo made the tackle, didn't well, I'll, I'll tell you what, that was good coverage. And Ryan is one of those punt returners who does not like to call for a fair catch. We saw him last week really take a couple of chances, made a couple of nice runs out of it too, but that's very, very dangerous. The last thing I told Lee was when he did the snap on the punt to get down and make a tackle so I could call his name out. So there you go. inspired him. <laughs> <laughs> Oftentimes it is the snapper who's able to get down there first. Yeah, I didn't expect it, though. <laughs> All right, first and 10, Chandler Law Firm first down. Sumner goes in motion, fakes the handoff, comes right up the middle, and that's a play that, oh, watching Strom Thurman over the years, we've come to expect that play, and that uh, was made famous by Hammond, certainly. I, I was just going to say, I expect to hear you call Jabir Hammond on that play. <laughs> Pick up of a yard, second down and nine. Backs on either side. Going to hand off. This chin. Chin is hit. Dragged down after a short game. Actually picked up. They're going to spot him at the 39 yard line. That's a pickup of seven yards. It was an Number easy 13. seven, wasn't it? Yeah, it really <laughs> was. Nick in motion. Fakes the handoff, coming straight up the middle of Stidham. Stidham's going to pick up the first down. Gets hit hard. Playing tough is Jeff McNichols. He's, he made, McReynolds, rather. He made a, uh, a couple of tackles in this drive so far, but not before. Stidham picks up the first down. At Run, the 43-yard line. Reynolds making that tackle out of his safety position. He is one of the leading tacklers in the county and one of the leading tacklers certainly then for uh, South Aiken. Rolls to his right. Left-handed quarterback. Completes it. Hit hard. That's going to be good for at least four yards. We'll give him four. Second down and six. Harold Hilton, number 22, on the tackle, and it was a pretty good stick. We see Paget Sumner going to the sideline. And it looks to get the call. Gilcrest in the backfield next to Stidham. Going to hand off to Gilcrest. Gilcrest looking for room, finds it, 
is going to go across the 45 down to the 41 yard line. Good running by Chad Gilchrist. He, he really kept his feet moving, looking for the smallest opening if possible, and uh, picked up a lot of yardage. Good effort. He's a power runner. That was not a power run, but it was a good run. Yeah, 16 yards. First and 10. Now Gilchrist moves up in the slot. Deion Chin joins Stidham in the backfield. And off the chin. Chin comes up the middle, finds a, a hole on the dive play. Coach Buck talked to me before the game, said I'm not to say that it's up the middle. <laughs> Nine yards on the carry, second down and one. Number four for South Aiken. Griffin just came off. Looked like he got a little nicked. Now Chin gets on the other side. Going to roll to that direction to his left. Finds his man. That's Nick. Nick spins off. Almost gets away. Dragged down by McReynolds, but not before inside the 15 to the 14-yard line. Strom Thurman in business. 143 left to go here in the first quarter. They trail two to nothing, but threatened to put a touchdown here on the board as they entered the red zone. Hands off, Gilchrist trying to find room. This time he swarmed over by the defense as they knock him down. Going to be a loss on the play. Nice defense by South Aiken that time. Gilchrist once again tried to tap those feet and find a hole. There wasn't anything there. Lost three yards, second down and 13. Man in motion, that's Ryan. Now it's gonna be a quarterback keeper. As the old Southern Cal <laughs> student body sweep and run out of bounds about the 10 yard line. We'll call it the 11. It's gonna be short of a first down. It's gonna bring up third and we'll call this a long seven. South Aiken playing some bend but don't break defense tonight. This is Strom's second drive into thoroughbred territory. First one resulted in no points. Did him gonna roll to the right. Now gonna look back to his left. He's got a man chin. Chin tripped up as he passes the 10. Nice tackle. Gets to the six yard line. And that's gonna be a little short of the first down. It's gonna bring up fourth down and three. Jeremy Hamilton saved the thoroughbreds that time. Chin's a tough runner to bring down. He made a nice open field tackle. And as coach pointed out, Strom not too confident in their snapping on punts and extra points, field goals. Looks like they're gonna go for it. They may call a timeout here and talk about it. Uh -huh. Now they're gonna let the clock run out and do it in the second quarter as the final seconds tick off the clock. We're through one here at the stomping grounds at South Aiken High School. Our score, South Aiken two, Strom Thurman nothing. You're watching the Gold's Gym Game of the Week on ASTV and WRDW My 12. Tyler's Tire and Auto Center, founded in 1963, family owned and operated for 50 years and dedicated to customer service with safety of your family, our top priority. Tyler's Tire is a full service tire retail, tire repair, and automotive repair facility with ASC certified mechanics. Located in two locations, 1019 Richland Avenue West and 1518 Whiskey Road. Let our family take care of yours, Tyler's Tire and Auto Center. Welcome back, Gold's Gym Game of the Week on ASTV and WRDW My 12, South Aiken High School at the Stomping Ground. South Aiken 
scores the only points in the first quarter on a snap over the punter's head by Strom Thurmond, rolled out the back of the end zone. Two to nothing is our score. However, Strom Thurmond inside the 10, they face a fourth and three from the six yard line and a, a big play right here, coach. And these are the kind of situations for South Aiken, especially a team that has had trouble winning football games. Stops of this nature can be huge for them as they go on through the season. Okay. Hopefully, they'll play well in these situations, but here's a chance right now against a good football team. This could be huge for them. Strom does not have to get it into the end zone. They need a first down. They need three yards. Man in motion is Ryan. He stops. The handoff comes up the middle, fighting hard. And Gilchrist is down, and I don't believe he got it. I don't think he did either. And that's what we're talking about right there. They send their best running back right at the heart of the defense. They may have to measure it, but uh, South Aiken says they've stopped him, and they have indeed. The referee points back to the south. So South Aiken turns him over on downs for the second time tonight in thoroughbred territory, preserving their two to nothing lead. But now they find themselves at the five yard line. Chandler Law Firm first down with the Tyler Tire end zone right behind them. Bowen Smith, the quarterback. Hands off as they try the dive play. They stack him up, and I believe that that was Tansy Richardson. Couldn't get anywhere. Let's go down to the field where Noah Fight has a Holly Tractor sideline report for us. Thank you, Ed. Uh, as you can see, the scoring is low here. Not so much across the, the area. Midland Valley has a, an early 14-6 lead on Silver Bluff. North Augusta is leading Aiken 7-0. Williston Elko. Up 16-0 on Fox Creek, and uh, Batesburg-Leesville, a 14-0 lead over Rich spring -Manetta. All right, Noah, thanks. We'll be checking back for the Holly Tractor Report throughout the game. Remember to stay tuned. At the end of tonight's game, we'll be naming the Center for Dentistry MVP. And now South Aiken has tried the middle of the the line and has gotten nowhere. In fact, they've lost three yards. It's third down and 13. We could have a 2-2 two -two tie here in just a second if we're not careful. There's a pass and a wide receiver in quarterback Smith, not on the same page as Smith threw it out there. No one out there to catch the ball. So fourth down and we're at the same spot in the field where Strom Thurmond snapped it out the back of the end zone. Let's see what South Aiken does. Myers sets up with his back against the back line. Tough situation for a punter. Don't have his normal distance between he and the offensive line and the personal protectors. Now a flag comes back from the referee. Uh, usually that'll go against the offense. Looks like they had too many it's players. Legal substitution. Somebody's coming off. They had 12 players on the field. So they go ahead and get half the distance to the goal line. Makes Make it just a little bit harder. You bet it does. Snap. Good snap. Good kick. It's not too deep, but it's going to take a South Aiken roll, and Strom Thurman wisely gets out of the way. It rolls out to the 42-yard line, so South Aiken able to defer Strom Thurman for a little while in terms of getting in the end zone, but now Strom Thurman playing field position has it again right here in thoroughbred territory. And for that punter, Owen Myers, I watched his footwork. One of the things I would have been afraid of is that he would take a step back when he was receiving that ball because he was so close, and uh, that could have been a problem, but he did a nice job. Not a great punt, but did the job. Man in motion is Ryan. Ryan trying to get to the corner. He's hit. He's going to lose big yardage. 
hit first by number 26, Jeremy Hamilton. And Rasul Clemens came up and cleaned up, I believe, behind him. He sure did. Loss was a yard. It looked like a lot more than that, didn't it? <laughs> Second down and 11. Three split wide to the left, one to the right. Garrett Gibson by himself on the right-hand side. Going to look for Gibson. Gibson turns, and that's a little high. Couldn't bring it down. Could Gibson stood him a little off on his pass that time. Thus far, South Aiken has had their defensive people in the right position. Okay, they have been around the ball carrier and around the receivers. That's a good sign for tonight if you're South Aiken. Not so good if it's Tom Thurman. Third down and 11. Going to roll to his left. Going to throw. High. Oh, and it's caught back in the back. And they're going to say, well, one person says incomplete, one says complete. And I believe they're going to say it was incomplete. Fourth down in 11. I believe he was just coming up to get the ball. Referee on the side, the side judge said no. And Usually that's all it takes. Yeah. <laughs> if, if one of them says no, it's no. <laughs> So the last time Strong punted, they're going to try to play field position. But the last time they punted, it snapped it over the punter's head. And as we've said, Strong has had an adventure this year on punts. The last four games in a row, they've had a snap go over the punter's head. We saw it last week against Midland Valley. Now Silver Bluff, Silver Bluff, I was going to say against Silver Bluff, Strong Thurman calls timeout. We've got a Bragg Heating Company timeout on the field. We'll take it with them. We'll be right back. You can smile. I love to smile. I was so pleased that I could get all of my dentistry work done in just one visit. You can smile. Painless. That's how I would describe it. Here at the Center for Dentistry, it has been a wonderful experience. With the comprehensive nature of this office, this one office, I can bring my family here and we can have it all done at one place. You can smile. Center for Dentistry, 1391 Silver Bluff Road, Aiken. Here's the Specs replay on that failed pass called incomplete. <laughs> What'd you say, Coach? Well, it's hard, it's hard to really tell, but obviously the official that called it incomplete, incomplete said it hit the ground. So I'll, I'll go with him. He's a lot closer than we are. All right, we're back. Strom Thurman went over and talked about it. We we're going to say it's Silver Bluff. He, they snapped it over his head. He picked it up and made a heck of a play. He hit a Silver Bluff player in the back with the ball. This is a good snap. He's got it. And he's an excellent punter, by the way. And it hit us. Did that hit? It hit somebody. It's going to roll into the end zone. And they're going to call it a touchback. And I, I could have sworn it hit somebody. The way that ball ricocheted out of there, I thought it hit South Aiken player in the back. Mm, I'm not so sure. I didn't. I, if it hit a Storm Thurman player, it still rolled in the end zone for a touchback. They were inside the 20-yard line, so they would call it a touchback and bring it to the 20. So either way, it's at the 20-yard line. Chandler Law Firm, first down. South Aiken gets a little bit better field position in the exchange of punts. Now here comes Richardson, and Richardson – and Strom Thurman has just put up a wall. It's going to be a South loss Aiken. of another yard. South Aiken lined up double tight that time, and normally that squares up a defense, and sometimes against that 3-5, that's not a bad thing to do and then go off tackle with it. But right now, Strom Thurman is taking him backwards. That's, what, three or four plays in a row where they have lost yard of trying to run the football. So South Aiken gets the right personnel on the field. Three split wide to the left. Bowen goes underneath, calls the play, hands off. Again, off tackle. Strom not being moved at this point. They're winning the battle up front right now. There's no question about that. 
They moved the stick an inch. So third down, 12. I'm sure that South Aiken trying to be careful not to make a mistake here. They're going to roll, stop, throw it down. He's no. got a man by himself. He overshoots. Number 11, Eli Bentley had turned and was all by himself. But Owen Smith throws it five yards over his head. Hey, Almost what? a big play. I'm impressed by Bowen Smith on this one, though. Look at the pressure right on him, and he takes a shot, and he got that ball out there. Obviously, a breakdown in the coverage for Strom Thurman. We had a receiver 10 yards behind everybody. Couldn't get to the football. Need to put a little more air underneath it. All right, another punting situation from the 18-yard line. Myers will punt again. We've got a punt off here. And South Aiken winning that. Two to nothing in this punt. It was a slip, it looked like, by Myers. And looks like Strom Thurman going to take over right where they left off. I think maybe they lost a yard in that exchange from the 42 to the 43. And there was strong pressure that time on the punter. Strom Thurman right now looks very dominant on defense at the line of scrimmage. South Aiken defense been up to the task. They've bent, but haven't broken. Gilcrest on the handoff. It's on the dive play over the 40 to the 39 yard line. It's gonna be a pickup of four yards. Brings up second down six. Now Gilchrist steps up in the slot. Chin directly behind him. And they're going to lead Stidham. Stidham gets outside with blockers. Doesn't make the 35. Knocked out of bounds at the 36. Nice so defensive play that time by Malik Lee, number 10. It's going to bring up third down and three. I was going to say, they, they were spotting it on the other side of the 35. They get it right. 36-yard line. Fakes the handoff. Going to keep. Keeps his feet. And now he's hit hard at the line. He's going to lose yardage. Let's bring up another fourth down. In fact, he lost two yards. Bring up fourth and five. Or a long four. Now, they stopped the clock to discuss the play. There's a penalty, apparently. There is a flag on the field. There's a personal foul against Strom Thurman, and believe it's a, a dead ball. You know, I think they were going to go for it on fourth down had they not gotten that penalty, even though they were not that close, not it, certainly not in the red zone, but I, I believe they were going to go for it, not after they got a 15-yard penalty. They got to punt it now. Walk off back to the 50-yard line. So Cole fell on to punt again. Good snap. Now end over end. Comes down, fielded. Going to bring it back up the field. This is McReynolds. McReynolds makes a nice play. Runs it back to the 33-yard line. Make it a 34. And South Aiken digging themselves slowly but surely on the exchanges out of the hole. And that was Lucky Bailey, one of the captains tonight for Strom Thurman, making a nice open field tackle on the punt. Strom Thurman's got to be scratching their head a little bit. They're not used to being shut out in the first half. 6.38 left to go until halftime. South Aiken hasn't mustered much at all on offense. If anything, they may have negative yardage, as a matter of fact. Snap. Here's McReynolds for the first time from tailback, and he goes nowhere. Looks like no gain on the play. Bring up second and 10. 
in the offensive line just not opening up anything for the running backs to run through for South Aiken. You are exactly right. The last two series in the start of this third series, they've been going backwards every play. Now going to drop back to pass, going to throw to his, down on the screen pass, sort of a little bubble screen. That's going to pick up a yard. You know, the pressure that South, uh, uh, excuse me, that Strom Thurman's putting on, very similar to what they did last week against Midland Valley. Dan Carr is a very elusive quarterback, but he was running for his life most of the ball game. So they pick up a yard, third down and nine. South Aiken, four wide receivers split wide to the left, one to the right. Smith checks his wristband for the play. Now going to roll. Gets away. Going to try to run. Going to pick up yardage. But going to be well short of a first down as he makes the 40-yard line. And they're going to say it was a fumble. And the turnover going to go to Strom Thurman at the 40-yard line. So Strom Thurman gains three yards on the exchange. Quarterback Bowen Smith is down and being checked out by the South Aiken staff. And that is a site that South Aiken has become all too familiar with the last few years, seeing a quarterback go down. Hopefully he's okay. Looks like he's a little tender on the shoulder as he comes off the field. Once again, under pressure. Alludes a good bit of it. Let's see if we can see what causes the fumble. Yeah, there it is right there. He never saw the guy coming from behind. Stripped the ball and then landed on, it looks to me like his right shoulder. 5-10 left to go until halftime. South Aiken's defense being asked to stop Strom Thurman again. They've been up to the task so far. Strom Thurman has spent most of the half in thoroughbred territory, but has no points to show for it as they trail two to nothing. Rolling. Sumner, who had a big night last week, was our MVP, Center for Dentistry MVP. And he's run out of bounds at the 31-yard line, which should be about a yard short, second down and one coming up. And Sumner is impressing me with his ability to be a possession receiver. Doesn't look like he's got blazing speed, although he made a couple of catches on long passes last week. But he runs good routes, and he catches the football. Gilchrist now up the middle. Runs in behind that big offensive line, going to pick up three yards, pick up the first down for Strom Thurman. Caleb Stanford coming out of there because he lost his helmet. He was obviously in the fray. Give him four, 27-yard line. So Strom able to finally pick up the first down. Now going to look to his left, comes back to his right, throws high, skips it right in front of Malik Lee, incomplete. Had a man out there, but looked first to his left and tried to come back and find a, a secondary receiver and threw it high, threw it off the wrong foot, it looked like. There were a lot of strong, I mean, excuse me, there were a lot of South Aiken jerseys right in his face. Tough throw. Second down and 10. <laughs> Rasul Clemens a little anxious, I believe. I believe that was number eight. That's Gartrell. Yeah, Sojourn Gartrell, you're correct. So five yards walked off against South Aiken. Second down and five. And the way yards have been tough to come by tonight, that should help Strom Thurman. This sort of reminds you of the Aiken Strom Thurman game, which was very low scoring. Gonna hand off, hit right in the hole. Big tackle that time by number 51. McNutt. Ryan McNutt. 
strong young man, and that's a nice tackle. Still game two, third down and three. And that's the thing about Gilchrist. He's a big kid, as big as Ryan is. Gilchrist still able to lean forward and pick up a couple yards. Rolling to his left, now throws short, and they're going to say he got it. Down around the 10, that's Nick with the catch. That'll move the chains. They'll be right outside the 10, so conceivably they can get a first down. That's a nice catch by Tyrese Nick. They're going to actually say he is at the 10. They lay the sticks down. First and goal from the 10. Strom trying to get on the board here in the first half. Now they hem in Chad Gilchrist. He spins up and gets a couple of yards. Brings up second and goal. Clock ticks down, 3.15 left to go. We've seen Strom, three, Strom Thurman three times this year, and Gilchrist has been a marked man in each one of those games. Whenever he touches the ball, they're swarming him. Still doesn't have the speed that we saw last year. That ankle still has to be slowing him down a bit. Chin on the right, fakes the handoff. Now rolls, throws in the end zone too high. Incomplete, it's gonna bring up third and goal. And it looks to me that Stidham tonight, very, very high in his throws, especially when he's on the move. Yeah, and I, I think that's a credit to the defensive front for South Aiken. They're putting some pressure on, they've got some size, they get those hands up. Tyree's not the biggest guy. And when he is rolling to his right, that's a tough throw for a high school quarterback who's left-handed. Third and goal. Going to roll to his right. Stops. Now going to run. Swarmed at the six. Still fighting. Hard to believe his helmet comes off. Hard to believe they didn't blow the whistle. They're actually going to mark him down at the three. So it's going to bring up fourth and goal from the three-yard line, and Stidham, whose helmet came off, will have to go to the bench. And it's fourth and goal. I have to think Strom will call a timeout unless they're going to kick a field goal. Field goal like unit comes on. Cole Fell is coming on the field. So Cole Fell will come out. Ball's going to be spotted right at the 10 yard line, so a 20 yard field goal. And certainly, he has the leg, as we've seen this season. Kick is up, looks perfect. It oh, is, it's good. Strom takes the lead, finally gets on the board here with 146 left to go. Three to two, sounds like a good baseball game. Strom leads here at South Aiken High School as it begins to rain again. We'll take a break, we'll be right back. From our Looney Tunes Savings Club that teaches young people their first lessons about managing money to free financial counseling services for adults, Security Federal Bank grows with our customers and has a service to meet every need. Established right here in Aiken County in 1922, we continue to be your hometown bank. We always work to meet the changing needs of our customers. That's why we've become a company that can meet every need for financial services. From online banking, bill pay, mortgage products, trusts, and a full line of insurance products. If we were you, we'd bank with us. Three to two, our score here. Strom Thurman takes the lead over South Aiken with a little less than two minutes to go. Let's go down the sideline where we have a Holly Tractor sideline report with Noah Fight. Hey, thanks, Ed. Uh, it's worth noting that it's starting to rain down here again, so we'll see if that has any effect on, on the play. But from scores around the area, Midland Valley leads uh, Silver Bluff 21 to 12. North Augusta leads Aiken 14-0. Wilson Elko leads Fox Creek 24-14. And Batesburg Leesville continues to lead Rich Spring Veneta 14 to 0. All right, thank you, Noah. The CMI kickoff. Haven't had many of these tonight. Kicks it down. Big umbrella gets in the way. 
I have no idea. I guess we'll have to watch the monitor. <laughs> Number two was on the reception. That's Tansy Richardson. He, he brought it back to about the 20-yard line. A little short of the 20. As we've no had coaches in our way tonight. We've, we've, had, <laughs> we've had just about everything. And it is coming down now. Well, there we go. The umbrella's down now, so can't see the field. South Hagen finds themselves back in trouble. Smith going to look to make a run, maybe back to the line of scrimmage. There's a flag at the end of the play. Not sure what that will be. Usually that's a holding call when you hear it. From, that's the umpire. But the way it was thrown at the end may be a face mask. And that's, I believe, what it's going to be as they walk it off. Yep, face mask against Strom Thurmond, the five-yard variety. I thought they'd done away with the five-yard variety. But now if you just touch the face mask, still there. So remain I'm first down, first and five. Back to pass, throws it out, caught. <clears throat> Finds some room and going to pick up a first down. And that's Bentley <clears throat> making the catch, and that's... If I'm not mistaken, South Aiken's first Chandler Law Firm first down of the game. It may be, and they may have to go to the air. Their running game has not been very good at all tonight, losing yardage. Well, we saw last week they shut down Midland Valley. That was a floater in the middle, picked off. And number seven is Malik Nicholson, who plays that safety position. He played center field and caught it at the 42-yard line. Really, that was sort of a floater out there in the middle of the field. There were some South Aiken receivers there, but Nicholson just standing there waiting for it. And Bowen Smith not happy about that at all. A little frustration showing there. And this is a tough situation now for South Aiken. And for Strom Thurman, I'm sure they're thinking about last week when they scored with 38 seconds left to go in the first half, and that really changed the uh, momentum of the whole ball game. So, 42-yard line. They got 58 yards to go to Strom Thurman. A minute and two seconds left to go. Throws a quick out. Caught by Cook. Cook at the 49-yard line. Strom Thurman quickly to the line of scrimmage. Cook has to chase the ball as it rolls away. They get set to Strom Thurman. Now rolls to his left. Throws it right to a South Aiken player. I believe that was Russell Clemens. Yes, it was. Okay. Nice defense. Couldn't hang on. Third down. 33.8 seconds left to go. Third down. Three yards. Quick shot inside, just did a short four-yard route at Gilcrest. Hit him between the numbers, he caught it. And it's first down at the 46-yard line. 27 seconds, they run the clock. Straight drop, throws over the middle, hits his man. That's Gilcrest. Gilcrest inside the 25 to the 22 yard line. And they should get a timeout at this point. And I believe they do call a timeout as coach calls it for him. 11.2 seconds left to go. And Strom, if nothing else, is in the range of Cole Fell probably to kick a field goal from here. I think you take a shot at the end zone or do you try to get a little bit closer? I think they've got time to run one play, but I would think they'd have to take a shot into the end zone, and if they don't get that, bring the field goal team on. It'd be kind of a long field goal at this point, but uh, capable. Let's take a look at the specs. Did you see that replay? That's one of the few times tonight that he has been able to set up and step into his throw. Nice catch by Gilchrist. And as the score would indicate, three to two, Strom hasn't had much success 
moving the ball at large chunks tonight. But this is basically where they've broken down all night long. They've played most of the first half on offense in this area. And you would think that after a while it'll wear the South Aiken defense down. Watch him throwing deep into the corner of the end zone. He does a pump fake. He's got his man out there. He throws it too long. Nick, Nick made a little turn and <laughs> clock stopped with one second and I believe they're going to put some time back on. I would think so. <laughs> if not, that was a very quick 10 seconds run off that clock. So they're going to send a message up. Four seconds, they're holding up a finger. And Four seconds on the clock. Four seconds on the clock. So to bring up second down and 10 with four seconds as the message got through and Cole Fell comes on. Cole Fell will now, from the middle of the field, attempt a 41-yard kick. It's amazing to me how good the high school kickers have gotten in the last few years. Used to be a 41-yard field goal was impossible. Now it's uh, routine for some of these kids. This is a little bit longer than what we've seen Cole kick this year. Let's see how he does. Good snap, good hold, kick is up. It is no. off the goalpost. <laughs> it certainly was going to be long enough, but he missed it. He certainly has the leg to kick at 41 yards. Yes, and, uh, he does. We we'll, might get a chance to do that later in, in the game. So Strom Thurman threatens here at the end of the second half to put more points on the board. As we said, Coach, they spent the majority of the first half this side of the 50-yard line in thoroughbred territory. And I like what you said. Str uh, Strom has been in their territory all night, but South Aiken has been bending a little bit but they haven't broken. They've played solid defense tonight. Uh, they've got to get something going offensively, obviously. I'm going to state the obvious again. They have not moved the football at all, and they need to do that in the second half to have any chance of holding on to win this ballgame. But if you like defensive football, this has been a pretty good first half. Our score here at halftime, 3-2. to two, Strom Thurman leads on the field goal that they kicked with about five minutes left to go in the first half. Uh, South Aiken scored on a safety when Strom Thurman snapped the ball over the punter's head in the first series to score those only points for South Aiken. All right, the South Aiken High School Marching Band is not here to support us and have a halftime show, so we're going to make up a halftime show while we're away on this break. So stay tuned. We'll be right back on the Goals Gym Game of the Week on ASTV and WRDW My 12. One evening we were sitting around the table and my four-year-old stood up in his chair and he said, Dad, I want to be just like you. And I thought, that's great, until he said, I want to be nice and big and fat. It was at that moment I realized I need to make a change. I took the skills at over 208 pounds and that was the point that I realized I really needed to make a change. In fact, we both really needed to make a change. Together, we have lost 150 pounds and our family has a healthy new future. Tyler's Tire and Auto Center, founded in 1963, family owned and operated for 50 years and dedicated to customer service with safety of your family, our top priority. Tyler's Tire is a full service tire retail, tire repair, and automotive repair facility with ASC certified mechanics. Located in two locations, 1019 Richland Avenue West and 1518 Whiskey Road. Let our family take care of yours, Tyler's Tire and Auto Center. You can smile. I love to smile. I was so pleased that I could get all of my dentistry work done in just one visit. You can smile. Painless. That's how I would describe it. Here at the Center for Dentistry, it has been a wonderful experience. With the comprehensive nature of this office, this one office, I can bring my family here and we can have it all done at one place. You can smile. Center for Dentistry, 1391 Silver Bluff Road, Aiken. 
From our Looney Tunes Savings Club that teaches young people their first lessons about managing money to free financial counseling services for adults, Security Federal Bank grows with our customers and has a service to meet every need. Established right here in Aiken County in 1922, we continue to be your hometown bank. We always work to meet the changing needs of our customers. That's why we've become a company that can meet every need for financial services. From online banking, bill pay, mortgage products, trusts, and a full line of insurance products. If we were you, we'd bank with us. Were you hurt on the job? Are you trying to keep your work comp payments? Do you feel like no one is listening? Your employer, the company doctor, the insurance company? Well, we're listening. Our workers' compensation team has helped hundreds of injured South Carolinians. Call us now and let us listen to you. For a free consultation, call 803-644-5335 or visit thechandlerlawfirm.com. You can count on Chandler. Welcome back. Halftime at the Stomping Grounds. Light rain falling here at South Aiken High School where Strom Thurmond leads 3-2 to two in a pitcher's duel. Strom Thurmond hit a three-run home run to, <laughs> to, to take the lead. Take the lead. And South Aiken scored two early runs. And the starting pitchers are both still in. Goals Gym Game of the Week. Goals Gym Know Your Own Strength. We're also brought to you by Security Federal, local lending, local decision-making. CMI, hometown doctors helping teams play again. Tyler Tire, we keep you rolling right into the end zone. And Bragg Heating Company, keeping you comfortable since 1970. Coach, uh, this is one of those games where it feels wet and a lot of slipping and sliding can probably... Uh, pretty much be blamed for some of the slow offense, but basically the two defenses, they played extremely well. They really have, and uh, Strom Thurmond has been dominating on defense uh, since late in the first quarter, in the entire second quarter, really, and you, you got to give credit to South Aiken. Their defense is well prepared tonight. They're in the right places. Uh, they're making some stops. Gilchrist has not been a major factor, and Tyree Stidham, who's been uh, perhaps the most exciting player in the uh, area over the first three weeks of the season, he's been somewhat under control tonight. Hasn't been as sharp throwing the ball, hasn't had in, any big runs, so uh, both defenses are doing a nice job. Now, South Aiken offensively, uh, as we said, probably was negative yardage until that last little series uh, when they had the turnover at midfield before the field goal. They actually had a pass, which picked up a first down, and uh, Bowen Smith had picked up some pretty decent yardage on a scramble and had gotten to midfield before he, he had the fumble. And uh, maybe that shows that they're at least starting – to put some offense together maybe? Well, and uh, we talked about it a little bit before the ball game. I have been surprised that with the two running backs that they have at South Aiken, Richardson and Malik Lee, uh, that they haven't done a little better job against some of the earlier teams that they've played running the football. And they're again not doing it tonight. And uh, uh, you got to think maybe the offensive line's not get big enough push to give them a little space to run. And we've seen at least five or six plays tonight where there's been such great penetration that South Aiken has actually lost yardage on simple plays where they should at least get a stalemate up front and gain something. Uh, so I'm a little concerned about uh, how well they're moving the ball because the offensive line is not giving them that push at the line of scrimmage. Here you've got the quarterback, and there, there we see the fumble. And he landed uncomfortably on uh, his shoulder and uh, maybe elbow too. I was happy to see him come back in the ball game. Yeah, that's the Aiken Regional Medical Center injury report. Only injury we had, and he jumped up and came back in the ball game. Cole Fell, who is a good kicker, and he uh, made that field goal look easy, making it 3-2, to two, Strom Thurman. And there's that last play, and... And I said he threw it up high, but he was hit yeah, as he, he was, was throwing hit. the ball. That's exactly right. On the replay, we can see that he was taking a little bit of a hit there. That makes it tough. Here's one of the best passes that Stidham has thrown tonight. And uh, Gilchrist, nice-sized receiver. And then this, <laughs> the kicker's nightmare. Good leg, 
hits the upright. Off the upright. <laughs> and that fired That's frustrating. Up, that fired up South Aiken a little bit. And South Aiken going to take the uh, second half kickoff. They will get the ball first and see if they can get any offense mounted whatsoever and uh, get on down the field. Probably would do them well. They did have a, a decent return on the CMI kickoff that they had after the field goal. And I really believe it's the quickness of the Rebel defense that has uh, been stifling uh, South Aiken. They are very, very quick up front. Got some good size, too, up front. Uh, number 74, Chad Stevens, goes, what, 275, 280, something like that. Uh, and he's a load right there in the middle. And then they've got those linebackers flying all around the field. Uh, Strom Thurman's very good on defense. Very, very good. And they're very fast. They're not huge. The no. linebackers aren't very big at all, really. But they are fast and they're smart and they fill the holes and the gaps and make plays. Yeah, and like I said, uh, Hamilton, McNutt for uh, South Aiken, they've been playing well. Gartrell, Rasul Clemens, they've covered well. Uh, they're playing good defense. Uh, I said earlier, if you like defense, this is the game to watch right now. The other thing that we haven't mentioned, but it did hurt Strom Thurman, they had some crucial penalties called against him that uh, you know stopped a couple of their drives because they have had the ball deep, in fact, in South Aiken territory. Just haven't been able to put it across the end zone. And again, our score here at the half, 3-2. to two. Strom Thurman leading South Aiken. All right. And at halftime, it's always fun to go down to the sidelines and get a Holly Tractor report at the half from Noah Fight. Hey, Ed. Hey, Ken. Uh, trying to keep dry uh, down here. It's uh, I'm doing okay. The notes aren't holding up quite as well. But uh, I was able to put together some stats for you at the half, if you like. Good. That would be great. No, what have you got? Well, obviously, you guys uh, full well know that defense is winning this game. But uh, as far as uh, Strom Thurman is definitely the more productive of the two teams. Uh, Tyree Stidham, he completed 10 to 19 passes for 88 yards with uh, his top receiver being Tyree Snick. Three receptions, 29 yards. And then also uh, on the ground, uh, Chad Gilchrist had eight carries for 44 yards. He also had two catches for 27 yards there on that last uh, drive where they, they try to get a score right before the half. And uh, Sidham also had seven carries for 22 yards. Uh, it's not quite as pretty for South Aiken as you all well know. Uh, Bowen Smith has only completed three of eight passes with uh, the two INTs and just 15 yards. While uh, Tansy Richardson is uh, struggling as a lead rusher with uh, seven carries for uh, just four yards. Gracious. I, so, is that, well, have you figured up what the total would be for South Aiken? I don't believe that they've got 19 yards. They've got a lot of negative yards. Yeah, they do. Uh, I mean, the total, total offense from scrimmage for South Aiken is uh, 17 yards. Well, so that's. Not pretty from an offensive standpoint. From where you are on the field, uh, you got any advice that you would give South Aiken to try to get their offense rolling? You know, it's hard. It, 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 clearly that uh, Strom Thurmond is, is trying to load up the middle and making it hard for them to, to run, run up the, the gut, which uh, uh, you can see South Aiken is definitely making a concerted effort to, uh, to try to milk as much time off the clock as they can and possess the ball. Um, and and the best way to do that is with uh, that power running attack. But uh, I would say one thing that uh, one guy who didn't have any carries in the first half was Malik Lee, and I don't know that he'd have a ton more success running up the middle. But given his uh, his resume, I, I'd be tempted just to, to let him try a little bit, maybe even bounce something on the outside. Uh, what I can say that South Aiken is doing exceptionally well is that the tackling has been tremendous. That they're there, uh, when Strom Thurman is getting those passes to the edges, they're making sound tackles. And when uh, when uh, the Rebels ball carriers have uh, got through the first wave of defense, the second level is coming up and stopping them. And they've, they've put some put some big hits on uh, the Strom Thurman uh, ball carriers. That's uh, I think that it, it might be getting in their head just a little bit. Not to. Not that Strom Thurman won't come out here and have a great second half, but uh, I think they hear the footsteps a little bit and maybe feeling a little pressure to that they should uh, have more points by this point. 
Yeah, and Stidham has had some some high passes. Uh, Coach, you got anything you want to add to all of this? Well, I'll tell you what. I I take a look. I took a look at uh, Malik Lee prior to the ball game. He's not a very big kid, you know, and I think he'd had some trouble running up inside. I really believe South Aiken's got to figure out some way to get their running backs and their wide receivers out in space. And and, and that, it sounds simple to say that, difficult to do, obviously. But uh, they got to get them some running room somehow, and they haven't been able to do it at the line of scrimmage. Maybe some screen passes, uh, you know, try to work it outside a little bit, quick uh, drops and so on might help. But they've got to get something going offensively. They just have had no success against the Rebels tonight at all. All right, South Aiken is back out on the field going through their second half stretches to get ready for the second half. We'll take a break. We'll come back and get ready for the CMI second half kickoff when we return on the Goals Gym Game of the Week on ASTV and WRDW My 12. What a crowd we have on hand tonight. And last, before kickoff, here comes the game ball. Set to be brought in from the sky by a parachute. The crowd has spotted him as he comes in for a landing. Oh, that's got to hurt. From orthopedics to neurology, imaging to pain management, or even if a good idea just turns into an accident, CMI can help you play again. Learn more at CMI.md. Holly Tractor has been Aiken's place for farm equipment, implements, accessories, and supplies. But did you know that Holly is your place for home yard equipment too? Riding and push mowers, weed eaters, chainsaws, and brands including Kubota, Husqvarna, and still equipment you can depend on. Come inside and see our expanded showroom. Holly is the exclusive dealer for Yeti coolers and now carry Generac generators. Holly Tractor, 1721 Richland Avenue East. Sarah found me on the bathroom floor unconscious. I had a total blockage heart attack and an anoxic brain injury. Aiken Regional treated me with love and compassion and treated my family the same way. Thanks to them, we're living an awfully good life. At Specs Vision Center, we are focused on total eye care. Be it our large selection of designer frames, latest and contact lenses, or our great sunglass collection, we have just what you're looking for. Our doctors offer years of experience and use the latest technology to ensure a comprehensive eye examination. Late afternoon and Saturday appointments are available, so if you want the best in eye care, call Specs today at 642-9902. Since 1970, Bragg Heating Company has been keeping Aiken and the surrounding communities comfortable. Our factory trained staff can keep you on top of the latest in heating and cooling technology, and our complete metal shop allows us to make any specialty piece your home may need. We recommend the best systems for your home, Train, Carrier, Dakin, Mitsubishi Ductless, and Bosch Geothermal Systems. We accept most major credit cards and offer financing, so when you need your system maintained, repaired, or replaced, Called Bragg Heating Company. We're here to make you comfortable. Back for the beginning of the second half. The Security Federal School Board reads Strong Thurman 3, South Aiken 2. And the Third Reds will receive the opening kickoff of the second half. And. Strom Thurmond will defend the South Goal. Let's get a bonus halftime Holly Tractor sideline report. Noah, what are some scores for us? Uh, I've got a few for you, Ed. Uh, Midland Valley is leading Silver Bluff 28 to 12. North Augusta is really starting to pull away from Aiken. They lead 28 to 0. Williston Elko is uh, leading Fox Creek 30 to 14. And Batesburg Leesville remains in control against Richbring. They're up 21 0. All right, Noah, I think I told you that this game tonight would be closer than North Augusta and Aiken. You're absolutely right. Barring uh, something unexpected in the second half, uh, I don't see how it, uh, it won't be. <laughs> and with those scores, no real surprises, uh, pretty much as we predicted earlier. I got to admit, I'm a little surprised that Aiken's getting beat 28 to nothing. I, I did not predict that at all. And, and to be fair, uh, uh, Fox, or excuse me, um, 
uh, Silver Bluff was uh, down just 14 to 12 at one point before uh, Daniel Carr had a couple of big plays. Uh, I think there was a, a long kickoff return, and then he had the long pass for a touchdown that's uh, allowed Midland Valley to pull away a little bit. All right, CMI kickoff received by South Aiken. And this is Richardson fighting hard. Gets all across the 30 to the 34-yard line. And that will bring up a Chandler Law Firm first down for the T-Breds. You know, one of the things we forget sometimes with Tansy, he's only a sophomore. Okay, He's got a ways to grow yet and uh, get some more experience on the varsity level. That was a nice run back. He's a good athlete, good runner. like to see him break out a little bit. Here's a quick out. That's going to pick up a first down. He opened up with that to Wozendove and got a completion to start. It was only for four yards, but that one goes for 11 yards to the 45-yard line. Good play for South Aiken. Nice start. And here comes Tansy right up the middle, fights hard, gets through the line, going to pick up positive yardage. It'll be good for three yards. Bring up second down and seven. Will Cheatham, an inside linebacker, makes one of the initial hits there. Richardson, a hard run, but he paid for it. Took a pretty good lick. With the five linebackers, it seems like Strom Thurman's linebackers are everywhere. Quick pass. This is Bentley. Bentley spins away. Maybe gain a yard as he gets to the 48 and a half yard line. Doesn't bring up third down and six. You know, we've seen this over the years, Ed, where the offense will just use those short passes basically as a running game, and uh, they're having some success with it. Maybe that's how they have to do it. South Aiken, a little adjustment. Now here's a little screen there you pass, go. and they've got Tansy in open field like you talked about. It's not going to pick up the first down. Pick up, two, pick up two, get across the 50 into Rebel territory to the 49. We'll bring up a punting situation, but that's what you talked about, that, get that, him out in open space. That's exactly right, and that gives them a chance at least. I mean, they have had nothing successful from tackle to tackle offensively. Okay, a couple short passes that were complete here. He's at least got some space. They get a couple of those linemen downfield on those little screens, and maybe they'll pick up big yardage. Fourth down and four, so Myers on to punt. Oh, uh -huh. it's a fake. Going to throw it down the middle of the field. Going to be picked off by Strom Thurman. That's one of those where the coach will say, yeah, you should have dropped it. But he caught it, and it's going to pick up a few yards over the turnover to the 36-yard line where Strom will have it first and 10. And I guess it was there was an ineligible receiver downfield as well. Now, I think that Strom will just take it and <laughs> decline that penalty. Yeah, illegal receiver downfield was a penalty on South Aiken. It is declined. Strom will take over first and 10 from the 36-yard line. Chandler Law Firm, first down. I got to tell you, I like the call. All right, little razzle-dazzle, little fake, uh, pulling out some stops. I think they've got to do that. They have nothing to lose. Let's try some of those things. Yeah, uh, and the fact that the pass was sort of floated out there, well, at least gave you a shot. Yeah, not, not much different than a short punt. Uh-oh. Here comes Chin. Chen, who said he would pick up big yardage, gets big yardage on this particular one as he gets it into thoroughbred territory around the 39-yard line, and this is where Strom has been all night. They're actually going to spot him at the 38-yard line. Nice explosion by Chen. Good block, and look at the hole they had off tackle. That's what we have not seen South Aiken be able to do. Strom Thurman opened a huge hole. 30 yards on that play. Here comes Gilcrest. He fights his way through, picks up yardage to the 31-yard line. It's a pickup of six yards. One of the we'll things we mentioned, mentioned earlier, Ed, two platoon. Maybe the other team is a little tired. Second down, three. And Chin and Gilcrest are quality running backs. They decided to come out now. Nice play. This is Chin, and we've seen 26 in the backfield before. That's Jeremy Hamilton coming through and making the tackle. A loss on the play of two yards, third down and five coming up. 
I really think McNutt and Hamilton are two good linebackers. Strom Thurmond has played the whole game right here in this territory from the 40-yard line down to around the 20, 15, even the 10. But this is what has happened. They've stalled on a big play or a penalty, as Coach pointed out at halftime. Now, this is a screen pass, and Gilchrist gets it. Nice he's going to be tackled. Helmet comes off. Is that McNutt? That is. Number well, 51. And McNutt comes through, makes the play. And that's another loss, or did they call it incomplete? I think they called it an incomplete pass. Fourth down, and that was actually a break that he let the ball go. So it'll, can, it'll bring up fourth and five, and Strom will go for it. Three split wide to the left, one to the right. Gilcrest in the backfield next to Stidham. Stidham going to roll to his left. He's a left-hander, throws it, got his man, and he spins forward. I believe he's going to have the first down. He's right at the yard marker, and he did pick it up. He needed five, got six. And that was Patchett Sumner again. And we've said he's a good possession receiver, and there, there's an example of it. Chandler Law Firm first down at the 27-yard line. Two backs either side of Stidham. Fakes the handoff, keeps, gets through, runs to his left and picks up at least five, maybe six. We'll give him seven. Give him eight. Second down and two. Again, Strom picks up big yardage and doesn't necessarily always look like it. And here comes Chin. Chin's going to pick up a first down and more as he fights through inside the five, down to the three, and that's going to be a Chandler Law Firm first and ten, first and goal from the three. And I think uh, Coach Hillary and his staff had some words about let's run the ball and pick up yardage. And let's put it in the end zone this half. They are fired up. Three to two, Strom leads, knocking on the door. Hand off to Gilchrist. Gilchrist fights through the middle. He stopped just short. Looks like he's at the one and a half yard line. Brings up second and goal. Jeff McReynolds, number seven on the tackle. They're going to say he's at the two. Two yards to goal for Strom Thurman on second down. Split Nick out wide to the right. Bring everybody else in tight. Looks like the wishbone offense. It is the wishbone offense. And getting outside Chin tackled short of the goal. And that was an interesting formation. They ran the wishbone offense. You see Texas run that. Let's take a look at it here. That's actually Ryan carrying the ball. Yeah, it was. Gained a yard. Third down and goal from the one. South Aiken has kept Strom Thurman out of the end zone into this third quarter. Now a quarterback sneak. And he's in. Touchdown, Strom Thurman. A touchdown finally scored here tonight. That'll make it nine to two with the extra point coming on. Pretty impressive drive. And I think you're exactly right, the coach said. We're going to run the football. They did that and uh, looked very good doing it. Got 30 yards on the first carry by Chin and never looked back. Gilcrest Chin, Ryan with the run, and Stidman finishes it off with the quarterback sneak. Kick is up. Kick is good. And our score with 6.03 left to go in the third quarter. Strom Thurman 10, South Aiken 2. You're watching the Gold's Gym Game of the Week on ASTV and WRDW My 12. Were you hurt on the job? Are you trying to keep your work comp payments? Do you feel like no one is listening? Your employer, the company doctor, the insurance company? Well, we're listening. Our workers' compensation team has helped hundreds of injured South Carolinians. Call us now and let us listen to you. 
For a free consultation, call 803-644-5335 or visit thechandlerlawfirm.com. You can count on Chandler. Ten to two, our score is the extra point was good. I want to thank McDonald's, our sponsor for food, who fed us before the game. I had a delicious quarter pounder with cheese. Oh, that's good. You you weren't here I to wasn't eat. Here for that. No. You were late. I was late, not late. <laughs> late people do not get cheeseburgers. There will be no cheeseburgers for you. Late for dinner, right? But we thank McDonald's. McDonald's. Tom and Pam Powers. I'm loving it. As they fed us before the ball game. And several great locations in Aiken. All right, here's the CMI kickoff. Tries to kick it back into the Tyler Tire end zone. Going to come up a little short. Fumbled around, now picked up. This is Hilton. Hilton's got some speed now. Ooh, there's a block. <laughs> that was Chance coming up. Westbrooks with that block. Harold Hilton couldn't quite get out there and get away, but didn't make it back to the 20-yard line after the fumbling around of the football, the muffing. Had a little rough stop, start to the turn, uh, the return there, but uh, made something out of it. Right on the 20, aren't they? They're at the 20-yard line. So Bowen Smith goes to work. Quick out, and this is Hilton making the catch. Now, if Hilton gets out in open spaces, you can kiss him goodbye. He can fly. He's a little guy, but he can run. And second down and one as he's a, just a, it's like a half yard short of the first down, just this side of the 30-yard line. Yeah, going to pick up the first down. There is Malik Lee for the first time tonight on a carry. We saw him on a screen pass. Didn't pick up much yardage on that particular screen pass play, but Malik Lee, the transfer from Wardlaw Academy, picked up, what, a gajillion yards last oh, year? He, he was unbelievable at the eight-man level. So here he is at the 4A level. We see him carry the ball. He also has plays safety for South Aiken. Does a good job on defense. And he gets another carry. This time, Strom waiting for him. Knocks him down, and it's no gain. Second down and 10. You got to give him a little room to run. That time, there was none. The three linemen for Strom do a great job of clogging up their gaps, and then the linebackers fill in behind them. And they're gonna. Yeah, they stopped Dre Carr last week. Dre Carr had 200 yards rushing against South Aiken the week before. Now here's Richardson. Richardson does a good job to get away. Will pick up positive yardage, only a yard on that play, but better than a big loss. Third down and nine. You know he's fighting hard. He's he's taking a little bit of a beating out there. He's taking some shots. Looks to the side to get the play. Now they're ready. Got three to the right. He's going to roll to his right, go downfield. And it's a little wide and out of bounds. Punting situation for South Aiken. So they pick up one channel law for him first down. And now we'll punt it away on fourth down. Trailing 10 to 2. Here with 3.48 left to go in the third quarter. Feel like I'm watching Sports Center. <laughs> the Strom Thurman Band here Aiken. entertaining us. South Aiken, one man short. Now he's out there. Good snap. Kick is away. This is a There's high a kick. Fair catch called at the 34 yard line. That's the yeah. right decision by Ryan that time. He doesn't like it, but he made the right decision. <laughs> Absolutely. Stay tuned for the end of tonight's game where we'll be naming the Center for Dentistry MVP. One of our young men will 
be smiling as they're named MVP, Center for Dentistry. You can smile. All right, Chandler Law Firm first down. Strong back out on the field. Three split wide to the left, one to the right. Gilchrist in the backfield next to him. Going to throw out to Nick. Nick breaks a tackle. Going to pick up a Chandler Law Firm first down as he gets out to the 44. And Nick has some explosion about him also. We've mentioned this before. He's only a sophomore. Just a little quick screen. Look at the acceleration. And I like the fact that Slender Kid lowered his shoulder when he was going to get hit, delivered a blow. Pretty impressive. Strom Thurman likes this offense. Three split wide to the left, one back, Gilchrist in the backfield. Now Stidham going to follow him to the short side, and he's hit hard as he comes around. That's my uh, Hamilton, Jeremy Hamilton, along with Hilton, making the tackle after he picked up five yards, second down and five coming up. And again, Strom Thurman doesn't look like they're picking up much, but it's always four, five, six yards. Yeah, it's a quiet gain, isn't it? Hand off. Gilchrist tripped up, and again, his explosiveness is not quite there yet. That's the kind of play that we saw last year where he would explode through there and go long distance. Third and one. Hamilton in on that initial tackle again. As it is, he still picked up four yards. Going back to the right side, Chin running over people. Another big pickup for Chin. He's down to the 33 yard line and a Chandler Law Firm first down as they move the chains. And he is starting to pick up chunks of yardage. Uh, he might get to that 100 yards. 32 yard line, they spot it. Thurman scored their first touchdown of the game a few minutes ago. Now looking to add another one. Now high snap, great catch. South Aiken gonna bring Stidham down. Probably no game, maybe a yard. Bring up second down. We've seen a lot of helmets come flying off tonight. I don't know why that is, but there's uh, number 26 that time, who we've called a number of times. That's Hamilton. He's lost his helmet. McNutt has lost his helmet. Stidham has lost his helmet. And the rule is, your helmet comes off, you come off the field for one play. Now, Chin goes out. Wide receiver comes in. Gilchrist in the backfield next. To Stidham. It's going to be a quick slant. And that's Sumner again. Sumner always pops up on a possession. He and does. he is a good possession receiver. <laughs> so second and nine, they get 10. They go to the 19 yard line. Chandler Law Firm first down. Gilchrist gets a short game. Gets to the 16. Picks up three. Second down, seven. It's a quick little pass outside, fighting hard. I believe that was Ryan, was it not? Yes, it was. And that's going to end the third quarter with Strom moving the ball again. South Aiken defense able to keep them out of the end zone, kept them out of the Tyler Tire end zone in the first half, not in the second half as 
Strom scores a touchdown in the third, and now we'll move to the other end of the field for the fourth quarter. Three quarters in the book, our score. Strom Thurman 10, South Aiken 2. You're watching the Goals Gym Game of the Week on ASTV and WRDW My 12. What a crowd we have on hand tonight. And last before kickoff, here comes the game ball. Set to be brought in from the sky by parachute. The crowd has spotted him as he comes in for a landing. Oh, that's gonna hurt. From orthopedics to neurology, imaging to pain management, or even if a good idea just turns into an accident, CMI can help you play again. Learn more at CMI.md. Okay. Security Federal scoreboard shows Strom Thurman up 10 to 2. South Aiken scored the first points of the game on an errant snap by Strom Thurman. Fourth game in a row that they've had a snap go over the punter's head. This one rolled out the back of the end zone and put a safety on the board for South Aiken. But been pretty much all Strom Thurman, though it's only 10 points. They've controlled the football, been in South Aiken territory most of the night, and they're back here in the fourth quarter. Third and one. Chin takes it off tackle. Looks like he got inside the 10 to the nine. That should be good enough for another Chandler Law Firm first down. On this drive, the thing I've been impressed by, they've been mixing their plays pretty well. You know, quick hitters, uh, both and the run and the throw. Uh, pretty impressive drive. We're going to have a measurement as they're going to bring the chains in to see if that is indeed a Chandler Law Firm first down. And it is. Yes, indeed. So Chandler Law Firm first and goal from the nine yard line. Strom Thurman looking to make it a two possession game and with the way South Aiken has moved the football tonight that might be enough to put the game away even a field goal at this point would be big from a two possession point of view Stidham calls it out another high snap able to field it Chin hitting the backfield and coming in and finish it, Rasul Clemens. And they've had a few high snaps tonight. We talked about the ones on the punt, but uh, a couple of their snaps just in their regular offense haven't been exactly as sharp as they need to be. And Stidham does a good job of getting yep. up in the air and catching it. That's yep. a center's best friend as a athletic quarterback. Shown brought us the nose guard for South Aiken. First one in on that play. Second and goal. That play lost a couple of yards out to the 11 yard line. Looks to his right, throws over the middle, threw it behind his receiver, reached back, couldn't quite bring it in, was Nick. Pretty good defense by South Aiken. It was. Hilton was there. I said earlier that. Harold Hilton was the little brother of a Gamecock and forgot to ever come back to it. And, and, and uh, Troy Williamson, who was a star at Silver Bluff and played at the University of South Carolina, also played for the Minnesota Vikings in the NFL and the Jacksonville Jaguars. That's his youngest brother, and he is fast. Not as big as Troy. All right, Stidman. Keeps it Stidham, and he gets inside the five to the four. So that's going to bring up fourth down, fourth and goal. Now this has come up quite a few times. It tonight. has. Both linebackers for South Aiken in on that play again, and we've called their name a number of times tonight. Hamilton and McNutt making the stop. Are you surprised they're not going to kick the field goal? I would say that the smart move right here would be kick the field goal, make it a two-possession game. And I have a feeling Strom hears us talking 
they're going to call a timeout and they're going to talk about it. Though uh, Coach Hillary is going to come out and talk to his offense. He certainly didn't bring Cole Fell with him. I guess they're right here. Now they're going to walk back toward the bench. It's kind of interesting. It's just the 11 players of the offense gathered around the coach now. And that would be an indication to me that he's indeed going to go for it. Now here comes the kicking unit out on the field. So they must have heard us talk. Uh, they, maybe they did. And I do see number 99 getting in the huddle, so that's a good sign that they're going to kick this field goal. Or at least well, attempt the, to kick it. It's the smart play. You certainly can go for it, and you'd have South Bacon pinned, and South Bacon certainly has not mounted much at all in the way of offense. But a field goal here gives you the two-possession lead against an offense that hasn't shown as much of it, any kind of strength tonight. Yeah, it will be a surprise if we see all of a sudden a rejuvenated offense with the ability to move the ball against Ron Thurman's defense. They just haven't been able to do it. So another 20-yard attempt. He's got one 20-yard field goal already tonight. Gets that one up. It looks perfect. It is good. Cole Fell comes on off the bench and makes the coach and me look good with a field goal and makes it 13-2, to two, a two-possession game for Strom Thurman. We'll take a break. Be right back. But did you know that Holly is your place for home yard equipment too? Riding and push mowers, weed eaters, chainsaws, and brands including Kubota, Husqvarna, and still equipment you can depend on. Come inside and see our expanded showroom. Holly is the exclusive dealer for Yeti coolers and now carry Generac generators. Holly Tractor, 1721 Richland Avenue East. The Strom Thurman High School Marching Band, not marching tonight, but entertaining us from the stands nonetheless on a drizzly night. It's not raining now. The umbrellas have been put away, and it's not bad at all. It's certainly not hot like we've seen the first three or four weeks of the season. It's beginning to feel like football season to me. The fall, I've seen a few leaves falling already, too. You must have been looking for those. <laughs> There's yeah, a pine straw that's, that fell. <laughs> All right, Cole fell to kick off. Cole's got two field goals of 20 yards tonight. Has half of the scoring as he added an extra point. Actually, he's got a little more than half. He's got seven of the 13 points for Strom Thurman. And uh, this would indicate that them kneeling on the field that someone may be hurt on the sidelines as they're attending to somebody who's yeah. down the Aiken Regional Medical Cen Center uh, injury report there is sort some, of odd something's going on right in front of us here Jeremy West is standing at the back overlooking And the whole South Aiken team is actually kneeling. So all of the teams have gone back to their benches. And again, not sure exactly what's going on. And we'll tell you when we find out. Going back over this, Cole Fell, two 20-yard field goals, added an extra point after a one-yard sneak by Stidham. That put 13 points on the board for Strom Thurman. A safety to open after Strom Thurman went three and out. And they snapped the ball over the punter's head and rolled out the back of the end zone for a safety. That's South Aiken's only points of the game. As the first half came to an end, a field goal of 42 yards or 41 yards, I beg your pardon. Cole Fell attempted, hit the upright, and was shot off no good and that's been our scoring South Aiken has done a good job of bending but not breaking as the night is worn on and the Strom Thurman defense has done a good job of 
not bending at all. As South Aiken has gotten very, very little offense. Total offense, I would guess, is less than 50 yards on the night. All right, let's go down to the sidelines for a Holly Tractor report from Noah Fight. What's going on, Noah? Well, uh, from what I've heard unofficially, it looks like uh, one of the South Aiken players have a, had an asthma attack, and he's being treated uh, on the sideline. Looks like he's uh, struggling to breathe a little bit, but, you know, without knowing exactly what's going on, I wouldn't want to speculate too much. Seems to be okay, but definitely getting a lot of uh, uh, attention from both the medical uh, training staff from both teams and uh, the South Aiken coaches as well. Um, hopefully... Uh, it appears they took his they shoulder did. pads and jersey off. Yeah, they did. I think they are trying to loosen it up, uh, again, what I would guess, not a, a medical expertise at all, but uh, just trying to get some congestion out of, you know, that shoulder and chest area. All right, Noah, thank you for that report. I could give you a couple of scores as well. If, uh, all right, well, that like. would be fine. Okay. Um, Midland Valley, uh Continues to pull away from Silver Bluff. They're up 35-12. North Augusta dominate Nakin, 35-0. Wilson Elko holding on to that 30-14 uh, lead over Fo Fox Creek. And uh, Batesburg-Leesville uh, is on top of Rich Spring, 27-0. All right. We appreciate that. Well, let's, uh, let's take a break as they brought an ambulance out to see about the young man, and we'll give you a Aiken Regional Medical Center injury report when we return to the Gold's Gym Game of the Week. Two and a half years ago, we had our first child at Aiken Regional. When our second child was on the way, we knew we wanted to go back to women's life care. But this time, it got complicated. At 25 weeks pregnant, I had to have my gallbladder removed. I would have been terrified, but Dr. Mento and the staff were so caring. When you trust your hospital this much, there's really no reason to go anywhere else. I should know. I was born there too. At Specs Vision Center, we are focused on total eye care. Be it our large selection of designer frames, latest and contact lenses, or our great sunglass collection, we have just what you're looking for. Our doctors offer years of experience and use the latest technology to ensure a comprehensive eye examination. Late afternoon and Saturday appointments are available, so if you want the best in eye care, call Specs today at 642-9902. Since 1970, Bragg Heating Company has been keeping Aiken and the surrounding communities comfortable. Our factory-trained staff can keep you on top of the latest in heating and cooling technology, and our complete metal shop allows us to make any specialty piece your home may need. We recommend the best systems for your home, Train, Carrier, Dakin, Mitsubishi Ductless, and Bosch Geothermal Systems. We accept most major credit cards and offer financing, so when you need your system maintained, repaired, or replaced, called Bragg Heating Company. We're here to make you comfortable. One evening we were sitting around the table and my four-year-old stood up in his chair and he said, Dad, I want to be just like you. And I thought, that's great, until he said, I want to be nice and big and fat. It was at that moment I realized I need to make a change. I took the scales at over 208 pounds, and that was the point that I realized I really needed to make a change. In fact, we both really needed to make a change. Together, we have lost 150 pounds, and our family has a healthy new future. Back here at the stomping grounds, as a young man's being attended to, they've put him on a stretcher, Again, we're not 100% sure exactly what the situation is. I think he has oxygen, and he's waving to the crowd, so that makes us all feel a little better. They took his shirt off, and uh, like Noah pointed out, he thought that he was having an asthma attack. And again, they got him on the stretcher and uh, picked him up, and he waved to the crowd. So that's a pretty decent sign, I would think. Yeah, and it looked like they had the uh, oxygen going, and he's probably used to that if he's got asthma. If indeed that's the case, uh, they can normally 
deal with it. Obviously in distress right now and getting the medical attention he has to have. What occurred? Sean Thurman kicked a field goal to take an 11-point lead, 13 to 2 over South Aiken, and came back down the field. We we're getting ready to have the CMI kickoff, and uh, suddenly there was something going on on the sidelines. And uh, it just sort of came out of the blue, obviously. I'm sure he just had an attack, and obviously they were able to take his pads off, get his shirt off, give him some room to breathe, and hopefully the young man will be fine. He took his jersey off, so we're not sure who it is. All right, Cole fell to kick the CMI kickoff down the field. Bobbled for a second, now coming up the field. This is Malik Lee. He gets across to the 25-yard line where he's tackled and down. And I believe that's Malik Nicholson. So two Maliks meet at the 25-yard line. 9.47 left in our ball game. Ball at the 26-yard line, first and 10. South Aiken. Struggled, has struggled all night long to move the football against this Rebel defense. Three, five, five linebackers. Now right down the middle, and that's Holbrook's making a great catch. Talks a little bit. That'll give him a little spark. Gets the ball to the 47-yard line. Had time. it off from first down. Had time to throw it, stepped into it nicely. Holbrook makes a nice catch. Threw it in that seam in the middle. Now going to go outside, try to get Chancey Richardson, Tancy Richardson, some room. He fights him off, and now here he comes around the corner. He's got some room to run. He may be able to take it to the house. He gets a block. He's at the 20, 10, 5, touchdown. No flags on the field. And just like that, South Aiken creates offense, and that is exactly what you talked about at halftime. Get him out in space, see what he can do, if you can, and he did it. If you can do that with the kids that you have that have the ability and the speed, uh, strange things can happen. Now, that play was supposed to go to the left, obviously, but he just made something happen. Okay. Uh, there's no sense banging your head against a stone wall, which they've been doing most of the time. Get it out there to them. Make some of these little flare passes, uh, quick strikes. Way to go. All right, South Aiken going to go for two, I do believe, as the offense comes back out on the field and the kicker, Myers, comes back in. So quickly they get everybody back out on the field to go for two. Line them up, bring Hilton in motion, going to roll that way with him and try to get it to him. He got it. He caught it. And he is in the end zone. Touchdown, two-point conversion to Hilton. And South Aiken, just like that, back in the game. And I'm thinking Coach Hillary's fussing at us right now. So, see, I told you we needed a touchdown. <laughs> well, well, I don't know about that. But I tell you what, the fans over here on the South Aiken side finally have something to cheer about. They've been pretty quiet for the last uh, several quarters here. And uh, now they've got something that gives them some hope. Well, as we said, the... The team, we thought maybe be a little shook up after the incident on the sidelines with the. Uh, I the, saw that there were some kids that were obviously upset on the sideline that one of their buddies was down. And, uh, and again, if you haven't joined us, change it. one of the players had an asthma attack and uh, was put in an ambulance, taken off. He did wave to the crowd as he left. But uh, South Aiken. Maybe picked up a little bit from the fact of their fallen teammate. Get out there, and they're right back in this. 13 to 10. Nine minutes, eight seconds left to go in the game. And Strom in a tight one. The last time they came to Aiken, they played Aiken High. They won that tight game, 17 to 10. Another visit to Aiken gets them in another close game. Here's Myers' kick. He's kicked it in the end zone to start the game. This is at the one, and he's going to bring it on up the field. Saw him return it. Touchdown. This is Israel. <laughs> Israel <laughs> Talbert on the return. Makes a good return. Doesn't look like he's going terribly fast. We saw him last week. He's the one that ran that touchdown back last week, I believe. Now some flags. 
came in late. And uh, I think there's some extracurricular activity going on between the two teams talking. Mm -hmm. And they're going to reach down a couple of flags. I think three of them threw their flags. And they're walking it off against Strom Thurmond. Personal foul against Strom. So at halftime, Noah Fight told us that Coach West was as fired up as he's ever seen him. I've seen him get a little fired up in the past, but uh, I talked to him before the game. He seemed pretty calm before the game, but I knew he wanted this one bad. Wanted to make a statement that he feels like his team is good enough to play. And here comes Stidham on a keeper. And he fights hard. He's going to pick up good yardage. He crosses the 30 to the 31 yard line. It's going to be eight yards picked up on that. And he just refused to come down. That looked a lot like Hammond in the past for Strom. They're going to bring it back to the 30 right on the 30 yard line. Second down, a long two. Stem looks to the sidelines. He's he's a little gimpy right now. He's he does limp a little bit up and back. Gonna hand off to Gilchrist. Gilchrist hit at the line and he's knocked straight back. He got nothing. Third down. Now no that's game. a big play. <laughs> Third down, three yards. Makes the snap, rolls. Had a man out there, but overthrew him. It was intended for Nick. Good pass, he would have had a first down, but he overshoots him, and it's going to be incomplete. Fourth down, and the punting unit, Cole Fell, will lead him out. And the last time we saw Cole Fell in this position of the field on a punt, the ball sailed into the end zone out the back. He was chasing it into the end zone, that's for sure. Now, he's punted several times since then, and they've had good snaps every time. Hilton deep to receive. No rush. They're going to try to set up a return end over end. Nobody's going to be able to get to this. Well, he comes and runs up and picks it up, and Hilton fights and keeps running. Now, he's a tough little guy. <laughs> But he's going to finally be brought down. Good coverage by Strom Thurman to get down there and not take it for granted. That ball took a nice little hop, and Hilton came up, picked it up. It's a little dangerous, but he made it back, made positive yardage as opposed to the ball rolling down to the 20-yard line. Well, I can guarantee you half the coaching staff, maybe the whole coaching staff, is holding their breath on that play. Chandler Law Firm first and 10. Trailing by three, South Aiken has the ball. Got the momentum now. Throws it. Oh, Ooh. now I think that was actually intended for number six, which again is Hosendov and Holbrooks reached up and almost made a one-handed stab. Can't blame him for that. No, no, and I think you're exactly right. I do believe uh, number six was the intended receiver. Incomplete, second down and 10. Straight drop back. Throws it outside. He's got Holbrooks out there, and Holbrooks can't come up with it. Overthrows him just a little bit. Third down and 10. So a big play here for South Aiken and for Strom Thurman. Strom Thurman with 7.08 left to go in the ball game. Gets a stop here, I believe South Aiken will punt. And Strom will have a chance to get the ball back and maybe run the clock. Maybe run it out. 13 to 10, our score. Three split wide to the left, one to the right. Now gonna be a screen pass. Got blockers in front of him. Richardson spins, 
gets away. He's going to pick up the first down at the 50-yard line. Spins again. He's not going to get away, but they're going to blow him dead before he runs and does the same thing again. He's an exciting kid. He is an exciting runner. Okay. But he got the first down. He crosses the 50-yard line into Rebel territory at the 49-yard line. First and 10, South Aiken. And funny things have happened on this field between South Aiken and Strom Thurmond. Going back to the days of Dakota Watson, when Dakota Watson picked up a fumble and ran it back for not a touchdown, but put him in position for it. Whoa, that one just over that stretch on. This is Malik Lee. Malik Lee with room to run down to the 30-yard line. And, and suddenly, South Aiken has found an offense. Yes, they have, and they're going to get a little additional. They were roughing the passer that time. And, you know, I love what they're doing. They're getting the ball to their kids out in space and letting them use their talent. That was very nearly batted down. Strom almost came up with a big bat down right there at the line. Got through his hands to Malik Lee, and Lee picks up 20 yards, and now 15 more tacked on at the end for roughing the passer. 15-yard line. Chandler Law from first down, South Aiken, looking for the Tyler Tire end zone and taking the lead. Three split wide to the left, one to the right. Looks to his left. Now back to his right. Looks short, now going to run. Going to try to get away. Now going to just throw it. Oh, somebody's he, down there. I think he got it. Touchdown, yes, he South did. Aiken. Yes, he did. <laughs> Unbelievable. Hilton comes out of nowhere. I thought he's throwing it out of bounds, out of the end zone. And Hilton catches it, 6.09 left. Plenty of time for Strom Thurmond, but South Aiken has stormed back after the asthma incident on the sidelines and now leads 16-13 to 13 over Strom Thurmond. Now, I'm going to take a bet that uh, that is probably the best play of Bowen Smith's short varsity football quarterbacking career okay he bought all kinds of time and somehow found Hilton in the corner of the end zone for the go-ahead touchdown kick is blocked but South Aiken with the touchdown takes a three-point lead 16 to 13 over South Aiken let's see if they have a replay for us on the specs did you see that replay on the touchdown this is one of the more exciting plays that we've seen this year in our high, fo high school football coverage. And one of the most exciting quarters that we've seen. Uh, out of nowhere, here they come. And they have done the job here in the fourth quarter. He looks, Watch he comes him. back, he's looking for that short pass to Malik Lee again. Now he rolls yep. back. When he threw this, I thought he had thrown it into too much coverage, but the defender Makes the attempt to knock it down, can't do it, and Hilton's right there. Wow. Unbelievable. Again, Unbelievable. That is Troy Williamson's <laughs> youngest brother. Troy Williamson, of course, big-time college football player, played at Silver Bluff High School, won a state championship at Silver Bluff, went on to the NFL, played for the Vikings, was a first-round draft choice. And, he, and Hilton, Harold Hilton, not quite the same size, but, boy, what a play. All Wouldn't right. it be something if this comes down to a battle of the kickers? Here comes Myers, kicks it deep inside the five. This is Israel Talbert, who's returned to kickoff last week for a touchdown. He breaks the tackle out of bounds at the 43. <coughs> Strom Thurman looking for a flag of her late hit. He didn't see any flags come out. It's going to be a channel law for him first down at the 43. Mark him at the 44. There are flags out. I would say it's going to go against South Aiken because the chains are moving back down the field. So turn around, fair play. 15 yards cost Silver Bluff. Uh, Strom Thurman earlier. Now 15 yards going to take it into thoroughbred territory. 557 left to go in the ball game. And this is where... Strom Thurman has spent most of the night in thoroughbred territory, but with only 13 points to show for it. Again, they led 13 to two, and South Aiken has stormed back to take the lead. Here comes Chin. Chin promised in a Twitter post earlier in the week to run all over the thoroughbreds. 
which was posted all over the locker room here at South Aiken. He's had some pretty decent runs tonight, and that one picks up five yards, second down and five. 41-yard line. Here they come again. Gilchrist looking to make some yardage. He does make positive yardage. Gets to the 38-yard line, picks up three yards. It's going to bring up third down and three. And, Coach, i got to believe this is four-down territory. No question. And Sean Brodus in there again. McNutt, Rasul Clemens. And I do believe this is Strom's first time trailing in the fourth quarter this year. Stidham in a situation that he's probably not familiar with. This is great experience, though. Hand off. Gilchrist fighting hard. He's going to be hit. Oh, and the, the ball's, ball's out. out. South Aiken has picked it up. And they've turned it over. South Aiken's got the ball back. Gilchrist pleading his case. But the referee says South Aiken ball at the 44-yard line. 4-44. Fours are wild. <laughs> South Aiken now will try to run the clock out with a three-point lead. And they stripped it. He was up, and they stripped that football. And Jeremy Hamilton ended up with it. A little confusion. Got to get enough people out there. Rasul Clemens comes in late. The big defensive player for South Aiken going to play that split position. I believe they'll keep it on the ground here, and the linebacker comes through, makes the tackle. I was just going to ask you what you thought they might do. They've been successful running that quick passing offense. If they try to run it, I'm not so sure they can run the clock out here. You know, from a standpoint of it, they lost a yard, second down yep. and 11. I would think you're right. Run the screen passes, see if you can get some people in the clear and pick up some yardage to keep the ball. They've had no success running the ball from tackle to tackle. None. Three split wide to the right this time, one to the left. Richardson in the backfield. Going to fake the hell. Oh, that actually went the wrong way, and Smith took a knee. Now he throws the ball. He's got to be careful about that. So the loss goes back to the 40-yard line. It's going to bring up third down, and we'll just call it 15 yards. They've got to make it to the 45-yard line in Rebel territory to get a first down. Tough Clock situation. Runs 320 left to go in the ball game. Here's a little quick draw. And Strom not having any part of that. And now timeout going to be called from the Strom Thurman bench. And certainly Strom Thurman will have plenty of time as they'll get the ball back on the punt. But Strom, with only 13 points on the board, is certainly not been prolific on offense tonight by any stretch of the imagination. No, they haven't. And I'm sure some of those folks sitting over there in the Strom uh, bleachers are shocked at the moment. <laughs> okay, they can't believe what they've just seen here in the fourth quarter. In fact, I'm having a hard time believing what we saw in the fourth quarter so far. All right, South Aiken's offense was non-existent for three and a half quarters. And then, again, there was an incident with what we were told was an asthma attack and a player was put on an, in an ambulance and hauled off the field in the ambulance, and South Aiken seemed to wake up from that with some inspiration, scoring two touchdowns, two unanswered touchdowns, to take this 16-13 lead. A Bragg yeah. Heating Company timeout on the field, and now we're ready to go. Big punt, perfect snap, kicks up, good kick. Now Ryan's going to try to field it, and he does field it, and he's quite the return man. He's got uh -oh. one man to beat, and he's got him beat, and he's going to go all the way. He's got one man behind him trying to catch him. He can't catch him, 
Strom Thurman. And there's a flag down. And there is a flag back down the field at the 30-yard line. And let's look and see what the call is going to be. Block in the back against Strom Thurman. It's coming back. DeAndre Ryan is outstanding on fielding those punts in traffic. And boy, he was gone. And another huge play brought back against Strom Thurman. Penalties have really hurt them. They tonight. really have. Okay. And I, I got to tell you, Talbert, okay, and Ryan are just phenomenal on these special teams. Uh, they can break it at any time. And it's heartbreaking for Strom Thurman. What a great run that he had. But it's coming back, and they're going to be a little bit deep in the hole here. They'll be at the 16-yard line, 2.55 left to go in the ball game. The scoreboard doesn't tell us how many timeouts are left. We know Strom just took one. <laughs> have they taken another one? Do you remember? Uh, I think they have taken one other one. I think so, too. I think they've got one timeout left. And they've got, well, they only need a field goal. And certainly Cole Fell has the leg to kick it, to put it into overtime. We saw him hit the uprights on a 41-yard field goal. There's a short out over in the flat. Caught at the 25-yard line. That's a pickup of eight yards, second down and two. Good tackle by McNutt, but uh, they did pick up good yardage. Eight yards, good start for the drive. Rolling to his left, throws with his left. This time he's complete. Tried that earlier tonight and threw it wide in the last drive when Nick was open. This time he makes a good pass to Stidham. And that picks up a Chandler Law Firm first down to the 34-yard line. Now this is the part of the field Strom Thurman's had no trouble moving the ball. They've also rushed real well at this point, but I think they'll keep it in the air. Stidham drops back, throws it downfield. Has a man out there. He's unable to hang on. There was a couple of defenders. Malik Lee was back there. Also, Harold Hilton. Neither one of them came up with it, and that was uh, their possession receiver, Sumner. Yeah, indeed it was. Last week that pass, the same route was completed. It was a big pass for them against Midland Valley. Good coverage that time. Second down and 10. Three split wide to the right, one to the left. Going to roll to the right. Throws it short, hit hard, picked up, put down at the 39, maybe the 40-yard line. They're going to call it 40. That's going to be four yards short, third down and four. And that's Hilton who came up a little limping. Hilton limps off the field. They're going to stop the clock to let him get off the field. 151 on the clock. This was something the first time I saw Hilton play was in the Jamboree. I couldn't believe how small he was. So, geez, he's be so susceptible to injury. So hopefully he's not hurt bad. He's walking, walking it off here on the sidelines. Third down and four. Clock runs. 135. Quick. To the sidelines tackled. That's good enough for the first down. That's Ryan with the catch at the 46 yard line. Chandler Law Firm first down, they move the chains. Clock starts again. No, they say he got out of bounds. Clock does not start. 128. Stidham calls the play. Strong trails by three. Looks to his left, hits Nick coming back in the little bubble screen. Ooh, he had a seam. Yes, he did. Could not get through that last man. McReynolds tripped him up before he could get into the clear. And another South Haken player is down. And this time it's Jeremy Hamilton. Well executed down. pass play by Strom Thurman. Hamilton going to limp off the field. He's been big tonight from his linebacker position. He's been all over the field. He's had a great ball game. Pickup of eight yards on the play. Ball's into thoroughbred territory. 46-yard line, second down and two. One 12 clock runs. Oops. 
straight drop back. Throws high over Nick head, Nick's head. Nick jumped as high as he could, but it was still about three feet too high. And we've seen him throw that pass to his left high tonight. And Nick was wide open. He put a nice move on, and the defender was just going to make sure he didn't get beat deep. Don't blame him. He did the right thing, and then Stidham threw it a little too high for him. Just less than a minute. Two yards needed for a first down. Look. Goes short again to Nick. Nick has the catch. Wrapped up very quickly by number two, Tansy Richardson, now playing defense. And Richardson is the young man who went real deep on the last play. Much closer coverage this time. Nice completion by Strom Thurman. Picks up the first down to the 41. Clock runs again. Chandler Law from first down. Rolls to his right. Looks, looks, throws. Incomplete. Off the fingertips. Pass was intended for number 23. That's Garrett Gibson. Unable to get it in. Corral it second down and 10. 37.7 seconds left. I would say Strom Thurman needs at least 25 more yards to get into field goal range for Cole Fell. South Aiken crowd making noise. Strom Thurman crowd holds their breath. Straight drop back. Here comes the pass rush. Over the middle. It's got his man, Gilchrist. Gilchrist breaks a tackle. Lee's got him, wraps him, and he gets some help from Richardson to bring him down at the 10-yard line. Clock stops, 27.3 seconds left to go in the ball game. That's definitely field goal range. No question about that. What a pass and catch by Chad Gilchrist. Nick gets to the line. Looks like he's going to spike it. Yeah, he does. Spikes it, stops the clock. 22.2 seconds left to go in the ball game. And I, and I got to believe the official clock is down on the field. I believe that the, they're going to say put a second back on the clock, but the clock didn't. Maybe more. 23.5 on the clock, please. There you go. 23.5 going back on the clock. In the old days, you could count on your hometown <laughs> or yeah, home field you, clock or operator to give you a little help. Can't do it right this with this way now. Well, the official, the referee, is still standing over here at the sidelines talking to West. Strom Thurmond. Uh, Just put 24. They can't put 23.5. They have to put 20, 24. <laughs> All right, now they got 23.4. Close enough. All right. Shotgun formation. Second and 10. Now throw it outside. Looked like he was going to be hit. I believe that was Ryan. I believe they kept him in bounds. They did. Clock continues to run. Strom Thurman going to use their last timeout yep. right now. 12.5 seconds left to go. And I believe they're going to have to kick it right now. I don't think they can take another chance, being that they don't have any more timeouts, unless he can just throw it away. But uh... I would imagine we're going to take a look at the specs replay of the play down the middle that got Strom Thurman down here. There's the specs. Did you see that replay? Gilchrist, Lee holding on for dear life. Got some help from Richardson. <laughs> Gilchrist is a big man uh, out there in the middle of the field in open space. Uh, he had a good chance of taking that to the house. As it is, I believe the ball is spotted at the nine-yard line. I think they're going to take a chance and take a shot in the, at least once in the end zone. South Aiken has got no pressure on the straight drop back in terms of a pass rush. If they only have, if they don't have another timeout, that's the risk you run. If he gets tackled, game over. They're going to go at least one more play. 
Three split wide to the right. Nick is by himself to the left, and Gilchrist goes in motion. Empty backfield. They're going to go over to Nick. Nick stopped short of the goal line. Now the clock's going to run. It will run out. And there's not going to be any chance for Strom Thurmond to get to the line to run another play. No, that's it. And the clock stopped. No, it's <laughs> it stopped at point two, and Strom Thurmond has been denied. South Aiken comes roaring back in the fourth quarter, trailing 13 to two, scores two unanswered touchdowns, a two-point conversion, and wins 16 to 13 here at the stomping grounds. And as we said before the game started, <laughs> strange things happen here to Strom Thurmond when they play South Aiken at South Aiken. And again, it was all Strom Thurmond for three and a half quarters. No question it was. And South Aiken had done nothing offensively. And I got to tell you, Tansy Richardson broke this game wide open on a busted play. He was supposed to catch that ball or run that ball to the left side. Was nowhere to go. He comes all the way back to the run or to the right. Takes off for a 52-yard touchdown. And things just got squirrelier after that. But that was the key play in this ball game. Absolutely, and you know, Strom Thurmond has, uh, they'll go back and feel bad about giving it away and that type of thing, but still, Strom Thurmond's an awfully good football team and certainly has everything ahead of them in terms of their two-way chances as the season prolongs. But for, for South Aiken, South Aiken, this is a huge win for their program. And I, I'm kind of surprised that there aren't more kids out there on the field right now uh, cheering on their team. Uh, I, I would have thought that the whole stands would have emptied. Too bad the marching band missed it. <laughs> All right, I think we've got a replay. Specs, did you see that replay? This is the last play. And it was a well-conceived play. They had a man in motion. Tansy okay. Richardson comes up and makes the tackle. That's terrific. That is terrific. What a play. South is a strong Thurman took a chance with no timeouts left. And, and he is within inches. I, I, I don't even know. We can't tell for sure, but uh, it's not even a foot from the goal line. And that is a terrific. You know what that reminds me of? You may not remember this. Kenny Houston making a tackle on Monday night football against the Cowboys against Walt Garrison about 30 years ago and stopped him one inch short. And that's exactly what that looks like. <laughs> you are right. I don't, you don't remember. remember. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, old, I'm old enough to remember that one. <laughs> I was not a Cowboys fan. Anyway, I remember those names. Monday Night Football. Monday Night the Football. Redskins. They stopped. I it. would bet money I was watching it somewhere, somehow. And Tansy Richardson <laughs> just did the same thing. What a play. He, he what saved a play. the ball game right there. All right, and that may give you some bit of a clue as to who uh, the Center for Dentistry MVP might be before we <laughs> name that. But we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we will name the Center for Dentistry MVP and do a wrap-up as South Aiken has won a big one, the number one team in the area. Strom Thurman goes down in defeat 16 to 13 as South Aiken scores two touchdowns in the fourth quarter to win this one in thrilling fashion and holds Strom Thurman at the one yard line short of winning it themselves. We'll take a break. We'll be right back on the Goals Gym Game of the Week on ASTV and WRDW My 12. Were you hurt on the job? Are you trying to keep your work comp payments? Do you feel like no one is listening? Your employer, the company doctor, the insurance company? Well, we're listening. Our workers' compensation team has helped hundreds of injured South Carolinians. Call us now and let us listen to you. For a free consultation, call 803-644-5335 or visit thechandlerlawfirm.com. You can count on Chandler. One evening we were sitting around the table and my four-year-old stood up in his chair and he said, Dad, I want to be just like you. And I thought, that's great, until he said, I want to be nice and big and fat. It was at that moment I realized I need to make a change. I took the skills at over 208 pounds and that was the point that I realized I really needed to make a change. In fact, we both really needed to make a change. Together, we have lost 150 pounds and our family has a healthy new future. Pruitt Health is here to help. 
For more than four decades, Pruitt Health has partnered with healthcare professionals to deliver exceptional care to families across the Southeast. Since the beginning, our focus has always been on quality, quality programs, quality services, and quality people. Looking forward to the future, we've developed an innovative model of care to provide comprehensive, streamlined solutions. Get well for life with Pruitt Health. Unique Expressions in the Mitchell Shopping Center is a treasure chest of gifts for all occasions. The collegiate collection is second to none. South Carolina, Clemson, Georgia, ACC or SEC. Support your favorite school. From clothing to mailboxes to tailgating items, Unique Expressions has them all. Handbags by Spartina and the Vera Bradley Collection. And a U.S. Post Office on site for your mailing convenience. Stop in today at Unique Expressions, 1521 Whiskey Road. Right, no back at the stomping grounds. And South Aiken is victorious, 16 to 13, upsetting Strom Thurman here at South Aiken High School. And before we name the MVP, we are fortunate to be joined now by head coach of the South Aiken Thoroughbreds, Jeremy West. And coach, congratulations. What a win tonight for your T Bird. Thank you. I'm so proud of these young men. They they battled adversity early on in the season. And uh, this is that was a great team. It's, it's a shame, like I said earlier, that, that two that one of these teams had to lose tonight. It was a great effort, a good high school football game. The fans got their money's worth, but but we're, we 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 like being on a two two game winning streak now. Coach, uh, if I can, uh, is this uh, this has to be the biggest victory for you in uh, in your tenure here at yeah, South Yeah, I, I told the kids for the game we needed a statement win, and, and this could be a statement win for us tonight. They were ranked number one in the area polls this week. And number two in 2A, and this is, this is a big, big win for us. They were rolling, averaging about 40-something points a game and giving up about nine points a game on defense. They're a well-coached team. Coach Hillary's done a heck of a job, and uh, we're just tickled to death to get this win tonight. What was the secret uh, for you uh, defensively to, to limit them the, the way you did? Well, we played pretty good defense all year. I mean, and and, uh, and the big side told our guy we, we struggled a little bit offensively in the first half, um, but I, I told him at halftime, I said, you know, I told him for the game, we're going to win this as a team. It's going to take a team effort, and the team effort came the second half, and I, I couldn't be happier the way things ended up for us. As far as uh, offensively, um, it seemed like uh, there things really got going after that scare with uh, with Noah Bentley uh, having a, a little medical issue there on the sideline, and, and right after that, uh, your guys came out fired well, up. One thing about our kids, our, our kids love each other, and uh, and they're a tight-knit group. And you know something like that, you know, it really, it really energized us to play with a little more passion and heart, which we've been playing with a lot of passion and heart all night. But that just added an extra incentive to us. But uh, we're, we're hoping Noah's okay. Um, but but it was that was that was. I mean, it, sh it shows the character of our kids. Our kids, we love each other. It's not a cliche that all these teams say. We actually care and love for each other. And we've been through a lot of adversity together, and that's brought us here in, in tough situations. We're finally coming through on it. Talk a little bit about your quarterback, Bowen Smith, if you can. Uh, you know, had his ups and downs in the first half, and, and even in the third quarter there, uh, you know, was uh, was more accurate, but uh, didn't didn't do a whole lot of damage. Then uh, after that, he uh, two plays on that scoring drive, and then the, the following drive, he was just uh, tremendous for you. Uh, Bowen, Bowen, let's like I told y'all earlier in the week, on in I think I told Jeremy. Uh, he, it's that baseball mentality, you know. I mean, he may go out as a pitcher, you know, you go out that first inning, and then. You know, you give up three runs, but you got the mindset that any time I can take over this game. And he's got tough skin, and uh, you know, I'm he's, he's mature and he's growing. You know, he didn't play a lot of he didn't have a lot of varsity snaps coming in this year, um, but but he just he's a fighter and his his uh, energy kind of feeds throughout the team. And uh, this and we're very fortunate to have him. And I gotta say, hats off to my offensive staff. The second half, they did a great job making adjustments, and uh, of course our defensive staff did a great job as well too. But offense, they've been taking a lot of heat, you know, in the first couple of games. But I'm proud of them. They made some great adjustments at halftime, and, and we were able to get that ball in the end zone a couple of times. And, and again, um, you know, Strom Thurmond's a team that scored 84 points combined the last two weeks to to just really uh, shut them down. That's a, a tremendous credit to uh, to your defense. It, it seemed like uh, the tackling was. Uh, was a tremendous job of tackling for you, by your guys. Yeah, and, and that's something that's haunting. I mean, we played pretty good defense all year, but but tackling and 
and penalties at inopportune times. And we cut that cut back on a lot of that stuff tonight, and uh, it gave us a chance to win the ball game, and we did it then. Guys, Ed, Coach, you got anything? Coach? Well, I'll tell you what, the kid that stuck out for me was Tansy Richardson in that fourth quarter. Yes, sir. Uh, that run that he made was phenomenal. Yes, sir. And then he saved the football game for you with that tackle at yes, the sir. end. Yes, sir. Yes, so, sir. He's a special player. He he's, is a special he's player. He's only a sophomore, and uh, he's got a lot of football ahead of him, and we're glad he's here with us. And, and uh, you know, we, we got some guys, you know, I mean, in the past, you know, we've we've had a few here or there, but we, we've got some skill guys that uh, we haven't had in the past, and and uh, they're, they're, they're helping us move this program forward. And i got to tell you, Coach, uh, I was happy to see you get those guys, those skilled guys, out in space in the second half and uh, let them use their talent, and that won the ball game for you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And like I said, my offensive staff did a great job making those adjustments, and hats off to Coach State and Coach Bush, Coach Zylstra, and Coach Collins and Coach Godwin. They did a great job. When, well, not only did Tansy make the great run to make the touchdown, what were you thinking on that last play – Nick caught that thing on the one yard line, and Tansy comes up and nails him and keeps him out of the end zone. I just, I was just happy he stopped him. <laughs> I, I know how the, uh, I, I know how the the Rams feel and the Tennessee Titans that year. <laughs> but I'm just happy. You know, we've had enough enough stuff happen. It's about time something went our way here. And I, I hate to sound sound that way, but we've had a lot of bad things happen. You know, and come so close a couple times, and to finally have something happen for us in that that situation, I, I couldn't be tickled more. Amen, brother. That was my response. Coach, uh, going forward, uh, it, you have to feel good about this. Uh, two wins in a row, and uh, like you said before, just a, a watershed win for the program. Yes, sir. I mean, and we got to we got we're going to enjoy this tonight, but we'll get to work tomorrow on Spring Valley, and they're they're tough as always. And then we got Colony County and the region starts. But this is definitely a shot in the arm we needed this this time of year that we normally don't get in the last couple of years. Coach, congratulations. Thank y'all so way. much for coming out. It's great to be on here. I appreciate it. Thank congratulations, you, coach. coach. Thank you. Thank you so much. Y'all do a great job. Appreciate y'all getting my kids exposure and all that stuff. Thank you so much. Well, we'll see you later in the season. Thank you. We look forward to it. All right. All right, that's the final score on the Security Federal Scoreboard. South Aiken wins 16-13 to 13 over Strom Thurman. Uh, James, are we taking a break? I'll just go ahead and ask you the question. All right, Noah, you got any stats for it? Or are you still with us, Noah? I guess Noah's not with us, so we don't have any. I'm here. All right, you're there. There you are. What kind of stats did we end up with? Well, I haven't put them all together yet, but uh, obviously the the big numbers, uh, as uh, as Coach uh, alluded to there with uh, with Tansy Richardson, those – those two uh, long receptions and the runs, uh, the one for a 53-yard touchdown for the half, he had uh, four receptions for uh, looks like s- about 71 yards, which was huge considering that, uh, that South Aiken was only able to, to gain five yards rushing in the, the entire second half. So their ability to pass the ball and have their guys make some big plays after it. Um, we saw also Malik Lee had a 19-yard reception. And uh, Bowen Smith spread it around. He, uh, he connected with uh, six different receivers in the second half. So um, Strom Thurman wasn't able to just try and key on one guy and take him away. As uh, Harold Hilton had that tremendous 15-yard uh, uh, touchdown catch diving in the, uh, the left side of the end zone there. And he had two catches for 24 yards in the half. An exciting game, exciting First half, exciting second half. Yeah, defense in the first half, and uh, I, that's, a, that's a crazy fourth quarter and an exciting fourth quarter, and I think Jeremy West is exactly right. A huge step for his program. Absolutely. I think we've got some highlights that we want to show from the fourth quarter, and, uh, of course, most of these are going to be South Aiken. This is Tansy Richardson's big run. One, two. All right. Those are the only bounces two. Off, bounces <laughs> off two. But he comes all the way back to the other side. Great block downfield. Look at the quarterback racing with him down there. That's pretty neat. <laughs> all right, so they go for two as they trail by five at that point, and they get it. And Hilton makes that catch. And that gets him. So here's the play. He comes back to his right, and he's looking for Lee, who he just completed a 19-yard pass to. And he goes in the end zone, and he finds Hilton for the touchdown. And that was a nice job by Bowen Smith on that one. 
<laughs> he kept that play alive and found a receiver somehow. And I'm not quite sure to this day how, how he did it, but he did. So, okay. so we take left, another look right, at this. Left, off his back foot into the end zone and... Uh, Sometimes when Nicholson, you take Nicholson was there, it just barely gets over Nicholson's outstretched head, the safety for Strom Thurmond, who's outstanding. He launches it, and the prayer is answered. <laughs> All right, two big plays defensively coming up. Yeah, this is uh, the fumble recovery at midfield. And they stripped the ball from Gilchrist. Huge play because Strom Thurmond was moving the football. Well, what it did was it was about five minutes left to go in the ball game, maybe four minutes, 444 as a matter of fact. And this is the last play, the stop at the one. Incredible. And, and in that play, I didn't even notice it, Jeremy Hamilton, who'd gone out of the game injured, back in the game, helped bring him down along with Richardson. And the celebration begins. And as Coach alluded to, the it's a big win. And it's uh, Strom Thurmond's going to be fine. Strom Thurmond will go on, and Strom Thurmond will have a chance to win the state championship, I do believe, in 2A football. South Aiken probably not going to go on and win the 4A state championship by any stretch. But this does set them up to do some good things, which has been a long time coming for South Aiken. Yeah, you got to have some good into your life, and uh, this is it tonight for uh, South Aiken. And I think Jeremy's exactly right. They've had some strange things happen, happen to them. They could have easily won the first ball game they played this year and got beat in the fourth quarter. I think they won the first three quarters against Aiken and lost it in the fourth quarter. Tonight, they lost the first three quarters. They were getting beat badly, but they won the fourth quarter, and that's the most important one. All right, we'll take one more break, and we'll come back, and we will now the Center for Dentistry MVP when we return on the Goals Gym Game of the Week on ASTV and WRDW My 12. What a crowd we have on hand tonight. And last before kickoff, here comes the game ball. Set to be brought in from the sky by a parachute. The crowd has spotted him as he comes in for a landing. Oh, that's going to hurt. From orthopedics to neurology, imaging to pain management, or even if a good idea just turns into an accident, CMI can help you play again. Learn more at cmi.md. Since 1948, Holly Tractor has been Aiken's place for farm equipment, implements, accessories, and supplies. But did you know that Holly is your place for home yard equipment too? Lighting and push mowers, weed eaters, chainsaws, and brands including Kubota, Husqvarna, and still equipment you can depend on. Come inside and see our expanded showroom. Holly is the exclusive dealer for Yeti coolers and now carry Generac generators. Holly Tractor, 1721 Richland Avenue East. Most people think the Y is a gym, but to me, it's so much more. When I needed help, the Y gave my kids a scholarship to a safe place where they could grow, learn, and have fun. And when I was struggling with all kinds of health issues, they gave me the guidance and motivation to get well. The Y helps families create a better future and become so much more. So give, join, or volunteer at the Y. Two and a half years ago, we had our first child at Aiken Regional. When our second child was on the way, we knew we wanted to go back to women's life care. But this time it got complicated. At 25 weeks pregnant, I had to have my gallbladder removed. I would have been terrified, but Dr. Mento and the staff were so caring. When you trust your hospital this much, there's really no reason to go anywhere else. I should know. I was born there too. At Specs Vision Center, we are focused on total eye care be it our large selection of designer frames, latest and contact lenses, or our great sunglass collection. We have just what you're looking for. Our doctors offer years of experience and use the latest technology to ensure a comprehensive eye examination. Late afternoon and Saturday appointments are available, so if you want the best in eye care, call Specs today at 642-9902. Since 1970, Bragg Heating Company has been keeping Aiken and the surrounding communities comfortable. 
Our factory trained staff can keep you on top of the latest in heating and cooling technology, and our complete metal shop allows us to make any specialty piece your home may need. We recommend the best systems for your home, Train, Carrier, Dakin, Mitsubishi Ductless, and Bosch Geothermal Systems. We accept most major credit cards and offer financing, so when you need your system maintained, repaired, or replaced, call Bragg Heating Company. We're here to make you comfortable. Tyler's Tire and Auto Center, founded in 1963, family owned and operated for 50 years and dedicated to customer service with safety of your family, our top priority. Tyler's Tire is a full service tire retail, tire repair, and automotive repair facility with ASC certified mechanics. Located in two locations, 1019 Richland Avenue West and 1518 Whiskey Road. Let our family take care of yours, Tyler's Tire and Auto Center. You can smile. I love to smile. I was so pleased that I could get all of my dentistry work done in just one visit. You can smile. Painless. That's how I would describe it. Here at the Center for Dentistry, it has been a wonderful experience. With the comprehensive nature of this office, this one office, I can bring my family here and we can have it all done at one place. You can smile. Center for Dentistry, 1391 Silver Bluff Road, Aiken. Welcome back. South Aiken wins, beats, upsets Strom Thurmond 16 to 13, scoring two touchdowns unanswered in the fourth quarter, and wins 16 to 13 as you see there on the Security Federal Bank scoreboard. Let's go to our sponsor for the MVP and uh, introduce tonight's MVP. Hi, I'm Dr. Tao Wilkins. And I'm Dr. Brooke Usry with the Center for Dentistry. We, along with Aiken Center Television, would like to congratulate the most valuable player of the game. Congratulations. All right. Thank you, doctors. And uh, I think it was unanimous. We actually didn't ask. Uh, forgot to ask Noah. <laughs> but I think Noah would agree with us. Coach, who's our most valuable player? Well, there's no doubt in my mind tonight. And uh, going into the fourth quarter, uh, I was scratching my head trying to figure out which one of the defensive players from Strom Thurmond was going to get the award for the most valuable or, or, player. Or we were doing <laughs> or cold the, Or the kickers. Yeah, yeah the kicker, that's right, yeah. the kicker. Okay, but uh, the young man that turned this game around was Tansy Richardson. Okay, offensively and defensively. He played a nice ball game all night, really hard-nosed game all night, only only a sophomore, but the 53-yard run with that little pass that was supposed to go to the left, turns around and brings it to the right, was the spark they needed offensively. And then his saving tackle at the end of the ball game. Uh, overall, a very solid, good football game and two spectacular plays. Tansy Richardson, our most valuable player tonight. Tansy Richardson, a sophomore on the South Aiken T-Bread football team at the Jamboree. I was talking about Malik Lee and... Uh, Bob Paluski, who's the athletic director here, and uh, and Coach West as well, told me that, yeah, he's good, but the best is the kid, the future is Tansy Richardson. He's a sophomore. That was the first time I'd ever heard his name called was that night. And uh, they turned out to be pretty accurate. And my understanding is he was just a superstar at the JV level last year. And uh, so it's good to see him on the varsity. Uh, he certainly uh, earned his star stripes tonight, and uh, he's a really good one. Gonna and that's be, not taking great. anything away from Malik Absolutely Lee. Absolutely uh, not. He's he a made, terrific football player. And he made a, a great play, a 19-yard pass play that got the ball down the field for that last touchdown. And he also played very, very well at his safety position for South Aiken. So I've uh, not taken anything away from the league, but Tansy Richardson, outstanding tonight, big touchdown, big hit and tackle at the one-yard line to preserve the win for South Aiken. Coach, any last thoughts? Well, I'll tell you what, it's a good win for South Aiken. They've got a tough road to hoe down the uh, as we get into the season a little bit further. Strom Thurman. Next week goes to North Augusta. Nope, and they stay at home. Oh, well, yeah, but they, they play North Augusta. And uh, you can bet that uh, North Augusta will be favored in that ball game. And uh, Strom Thurman's not used to that, losing a ball game, coming back as the underdog for the next one. Should be an interesting ball game next week. And we look forward to that as we'll be back at Strom Thurman next week, our favorite press box that has air conditioning and heat and all the comforts of home. So we'll be up in Edgefield, in between Johnston, Edgefield, and Trenton, and bringing you all the action as North Augusta will travel 
over from their spot on the west side of the county and travel up into Edgefield County to take on Strom Thurmond. They're the number one and two team in the area, and I have a feeling they'll probably still be one and two going into next week. So that's going to do it for tonight's game for...